is on her way with pastry. She has stuck in the Capitol Grounds rush over there. One day. Yes, the morning coffee rush. So what we're going to do today, um, Annika can't join us. I'll stand over here. <laughs> For you. Um, Annika can't join us, unfortunately. But I think we can still do what we need to do um, for uh, our time. So the board said the, the two main goals of this day was to talk about processes. So I have two that we went through, or you all went through as a board, um, that we're going to dig deep into and look at what was positive about it, what could have been different about it. Um, and then we're going to look at themes of those processes to think in the future when we have big decisions to make. Like, let's keep the hold true to these parts of the process and try to um, be aware of parts that may not have worked. Okay. So that's our morning work. So then we'll take a break. And then our um, after break work is to do some goal setting. So we're going to do a brainstorming protocol. We'll have time for individual think, for small partnership think, then big think all together. Okay. And that's kind of how two different protocols in the more, uh, between breaks is going to go. It's kind of uh, individual small group and then bring it back to the whole group at the end to make sure that all voices are heard. Yeah, sound good? Sounds all right. Um, any questions before we start? Should we do the consent agenda? We have one item. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, in fact, you have to, I was going to say, we have to formally like, I think, start the meeting. There you go. Meeting formally started at 820. Um, 10. 810, sorry. 09. 809. 809. Whatever. Um, I, I move to approve the consent agenda. Um, uh, well, I think we need to give opportunity for public comment. Okay. Oh. Public comment? None. Um, and then I move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? I second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. All right, now we're ready to go. Okay, first, do we don't have a Zoom option? We can't. No, we don't have this one. Okay. You can't from this room. Anyway, just in that part of the terrible opening and close out. No, we have a space that people can come to, but you don't need a Zoom option. That's just an extra that we can waiting for something else. There we go. Pay streets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Huh? Are you going to be talking? Anna, mine's on Zach's. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do a protocol, kind of a kind of a, a take on what's called Rogue Cafe. Um, has anybody done a Rogue Cafe before? Okay. So you kind of do rounds of questions within your small group, and the whole purpose is to dig deep and then get feedback from the other groups. Okay, we have two groups, it's a little bit, it usually goes into more depth when you have more than two groups, but we're gonna make it work with just our two groups here. Um, and so this is all about process. So that's where your, your head should go. So this group over here, you're gonna focus solely on the SRO and safety committee process. Okay, that's your job. This group over here is gonna work on the track process. That's your job, okay? Um, so you're going to have opportunity to talk off the other process as well. So don't think that you're going to like not, not be able to talk anything about the track. You will be. It's just um, you're going to focus in on what I just gave you. We're going to go through four different sets of questions. Well, one's not a question, one's a statement. One's just a task. But we're going to go through four different questions um, that we have planned. One person in your group needs to be a transcriber, a person who's going to write. Okay, and then one person in your group, or two people actually, because we have more, I forgot that American Zach were gonna come. So two people in your group are gonna be travelers, okay? So the job of the traveler is that you're gonna take your information that you talked about, so you have to have a good memory, and travel to the other team, right? The other team's gonna present to you what they had been talking about, and the travelers are gonna do two things. They're going to really dig in and ask questions, and I actually gave you some question starters in case, just in case you need some scaffolding there. So that's at your um, seats. You're gonna dig in with like, did you think about, 
what about, you know, those kind of really deep questions. So, the, and the people who remain at the table, your job is not necessarily to answer them. Your job is to really think about them because then that travelers are going to go back to their original homes and then your group's going to be able to discuss a little bit further. The travelers were wondering about what do we think about that kind of thing. So you're going to dig a little bit, have a chance to dig a little bit deeper into that original question. Can I, that doesn't make sense. It will when we start. I can I talk for a second? Yeah. Did we talk at the last meeting about flipping the process and the work plan? No, we didn't. I think so. I think we did. Did we? Did yeah. you do goals first and then process second? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Am I remembering yeah. that correctly? I think that was in your email, but does it, does it matter? matter? Is it? I don't think it matters. I just want to, I just you remember. Want, I see Amanda nodding. Do a, it's just like we're always running out of time, so we, I think I do think the goal setting travels more better into the into the board meeting yeah. than, than I mean, I'm, I'm fine with this the process so I do remember if we do run out of time yeah. 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 Right. Sorry. okay here's your first task all right and this is not one. well we will travel on this one but this is not one that you're gonna be sitting you're gonna be up at your board so my track people are gonna be up over here and my safety committee is gonna be up over here your first task is to simply write a detailed timeline of what happened with the process. From the very first thing you remember um, to the end of part of it, or where we are currently at the end part, because I know the uh, track isn't necessarily right. Um, so that's your first goal. You'll have seven minutes to get that down, so there's not a lot of time to talk. So you all can go up and write on that side of the board. You all over there. Detail timeline. Take, take the lead there. Timeline of what happened with that process. <laughs> you guys were one challenge, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> right. I don't think right. three of us were present. I think we're all that. together to come Safety up with so our time. Yeah, yeah we're going to get around that. Just, um, so, for this yeah. part, will, you guys are going to be excellent like, questioners then, right? Yeah, because sure. you'll be able to question a little bit differently. So, I think for the timeline that the moves out of the slide check, the presentation, April of last year. That's something we could put a question mark next to that. Yeah, that is all. Yeah, learning. The impetus from the student service account. Was, so there was a, the first was a, was a presentation, I think, followed by, and if you don't know exact dates, it's okay, it's like yeah. general time. Well, it kind of, this happened first, yeah, exactly. and then this. Exactly, yeah. Um, the students brought a presentation with like a PowerPoint and yeah. pictures of the track and just sort of explaining so how it wasn't working for them and why it felt like yeah. it was important to invest. Oh, so that was the first time? Was the student presentation when you heard yes. of those? Okay. That That's what I recall. So, there may have been like there might have been like one email or something, but not so, that I well, can it was, yeah. pull up in my so memory. Summer, 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 was that like because first time I heard about it was that S or funding survey? Like how to spend that money? I don't know when that was exactly. That would have that would have happened after April. after yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Parents and caregivers. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I'm i not like remembering question. one specific one, but I'm also not finishing my first cup of coffee of the day, so. Okay. Yeah. Jill, and yeah. do you remember there? anything there before? Definitely, no, I mean, there were definitely a lot of emails. But I think you know. Leading up to that presentation, so that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, that like we're coincided with. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll just say plus public email. Right into the yes left. Okay. Just for transparency. And then, um, and then at some point, Andrew did a study, part of that. Universe, uh, yeah. did the initial study for like feasibility or whatever, mm -hmm. like basic. So maybe we could put that in the middle of, I don't know, because that was about like, what, there was the idea for it, there was a the study, then there was the vote. And there was a bunch of stuff in between that. Well, as Merrick said, there's, yeah, yeah there was the, the it was included yeah. in the ESSER surveys. Yeah, right. So that was like. But I think the feasibility was first. I think the Before the ESSER? I think it was. I don't remember seeing the feasibility until pretty much the feasibility was okay. presented to us at that board meeting. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we don't know. The question is when did the campus <laughs> start the feasibility? So right. we'll let's do this. Let's do, okay, so and just some. Libby's got a memory. No. Oh. Right. Right. Um, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm switching because I don't remember well, like, you're gonna there, Jill, like okay. do you remember me at like approving a feasibility study or anything like that? The, like you know, know, coming, I don't think that came to the board. I think that was so just Brent's joining um, your team. Okay. okay. Uh, 
Welcome, Red. Thanks, <laughs> Angie. Our is world really traveler. Nice way to <laughs> and also, like, community engagement, caregiver engagement continued. Do you remember that? I heard it all happened after COVID hit. It did all happen. It did. It's all July. It was, it was July. It was, it was. People started it started. writing uh, around uh, when school started. Okay. Um, and there was the study. switch of the SRL. Okay. That was placed in the elementary school. Yeah. Yeah, there was no. There was no answer up there. The elementary school. But she was there with her mom. It's sort of like she was like. Yeah, there was there was an incident at UES. Is this one of the things we're considering? Is it not one of the things we're considering? Also, also in early. No, that was like the first day of school. Yeah, in early in school. Um, infrastructure bill. We have about so two minutes last to get your timeline down. Is this going to be infrastructure money or just the summer? Right. Right. Like, I feel like there was this question mark of like how, if we were to do this track project, where would yeah. the money where come the, from? Um, okay. So do we need to get more And I, just, I forget, I, know, or I forget whether the U, I think the UAS incident so happened. And they were in April? March, April. I forget exactly when um, the, like, the board. What happened in the last month? Uh, I forgot whether it was before or after, after the UAS, but it was around then. Libby said dates don't matter. Dates don't matter. It was also a. Yeah. Uh, Joel, let me know if I'm just remembering. Um, and it's not there was a, just to make sure everyone uh, has the same idea of what happened. Community right. slash caregiver right. petition right. to remove the so, SRO. Correct. I thought it was sort of like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not After, it might have even gotten started really before that. Really on my happened. radar, and then it just was like, bam, it's on an agenda. Right. Feasibility study. But was the feasibility results. study presented? Wasn't that presented with the potential for a vote mm -hmm. that, that night? No. The feasibility study was the, the second board meeting that we had, and that vote. So it I feel like that's early 2020. But then, you know, because the feasibility study was presented to us before we retired, and then yeah. I was yeah. calling for more public input and asked for the um, to be held. We held and I think also in fall of 2019, there were further board discussions um, that facilities. resulted in the decision facilities. to create yeah. a um, SRO safety plan. Uh, vote facilities. was called. Oh, right, yeah, because we saw the feasibility at that one. Yeah. Uh, and then we have take one more minute to get your broad strokes um, down. Public. I mean, I wasn't even on the board until March 2020. Input. And I feel like I remember these things happening. So I'm, like, I'm really confused. <laughs> oh, it might be so 2020. Like Sorry, it's no. We're, we're, yeah, it's yeah. 20. It's 2020. Um, 2019. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. Well, well, it was a so that was the second. Yeah, for right. postponed. Yeah. Sorry. You're no, that's okay. I mean, I think it probably did start fall of 2019, but I started. It didn't March start in fall of 2019. Like, no, I'll be honest, did, the. We did this in 2020 uh, for sure. Yeah, like, I think that summer. Yeah, we did yeah. It, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. When, when COVID it's started in 2020? Mm -hmm. two, yeah, I would say COVID 19, but it really is COVID 20. Yeah, it started like March and we like closed school down, and then I feel like received a lot of input. Yeah. This definitely yeah. happened and over the summer of 2020. Spring, summer of 2020. Yeah, my, you're right. My memory. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I'm right here. Um, yeah, I don't know if this really, we should keep asking you So, the board level. Yeah. But we have right, this. Finish up your last thought. Um, if you don't so have dates, don't worry about it. It's broad strokes. <laughs> broad strokes. I mean, like, honestly, it started after George Floyd. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, July. Like, we, we like, 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 estimates yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Like, for the board did not hear a thing yeah. about the SRO until okay. George Floyd, which makes yeah. a lot of sense. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Good job, team. And we also Good job, had a, team. an SRO that I think was yeah. well liked. And he yeah. left. And yeah. he left. And yes. yeah, that's the other thing. And it's long. Yeah. 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 I should Google that. Yeah. 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 Matt Nazi yeah. left. Yeah. 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 Matt Nazi yeah. leaves. There was a lot of concern with. Was that after the board, the committee report? It was like this summer. I think that's when he's traveling. Yeah, so Matt Nazi leaves in 2019 to do the new SRO. So it's before. I put George Floyd on it, too, because I think it. Because you weren't so mad. All right, finish up that thought, Kristen. Yeah. Oh, SRO departs, okay. and then we have a new SRO. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But does this come then out? The new ISR came in before yeah. the charter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we have. So what you're going to do just for five minutes while Kristen's finishing up that last thought, just for five minutes, we're going to, everybody's going to cross, not just the travelers, but everybody's going to cross. Okay. Mm-hmm. And just pick up a different color marker. And if there's something that you remember happening in that timeline that you think is part of the broad strokes and important to get down, just write it down just to make sure that everybody has the same idea about what happened in this process. And remember, exact dates, exact board meetings don't really matter. It's just kind of a timeline of events, okay? So everybody's gonna cross, grab another marker. You don't, one person doesn't have to write, but you could. Um, and just look what they did and add on anything you think needs to be added on, okay? And we have about five minutes to do that. I wasn't around for the SRM, so. Your head's a little beautiful. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it adds a little flavor to the meeting. Or when was it created, the whole safety? Oh, when was the committee formed? Yeah. Because that's um, the final item. Was it late September? 2020? Yeah. 2020? Okay, so we'll go wrap that up. September. Yeah. Pick a different color just so we know that it's added on. I got you. Okay, so, okay, so the SRO departs, new SRO, George Floyd, um, parents, community, SRO program, I don't know what that mark that is, SRO program. Public comment. What is the community is asking? What is the role of the SRO? I see. I see. Questions around questions around the SRO program. Okay. Public comment. Emails. Late summer fall. Board takes up issue. Um, start of school. Yes, incident, right, on the playground. Like, just there was a police, police presence on the playground the first day of school. The first day of school. I don't know. But she's put a band in after. Yeah. Community. Um, yeah. CG caregiver? Petition. Yes, I think so. So, this was, uh, and can we name that group there? Uh, just schools? That one? Just schools initiative. Yeah. Emma, I think you and I could fill in a little bit more of what happened next because we were on the committee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Board creates awesome. Um, so we met September through. Um, when did it end? I want to say it was March. It was a long process. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a don't get caught up on the dates. Oh, this was the committee to recommend the we're moving up the exactly. resource officer. Yeah. School resource yeah. officer, yeah. Um, September 20 to March 21, uh, committee work. Um, and you could be like uh, community surveys, mm-hmm. like stakeholder engagement. That include teachers? Yes. It did. <clears throat> and like police officers and, and other and schools and college. caregivers and uh, social workers and kind of anybody you can imagine. Students. Is it reasonable to infer that those conversations were happening in a lot of districts or no? As you reached out beyond our yeah. district, there were like several a conversations. Yeah. At least. I would not want to use the word. I want to use the describer. A lot. handful. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, and then I think happened. it was probably March of 21 where the board voted to not have an SRO. Uh, committee presentation and board vote. Yep. Maybe that's what you could say. So 50% of Vermont schools have SROs or just across the country? In Vermont. Okay. Yeah. School districts. Right. Not individual schools, okay. like we had for our students. Right. Yeah, I think you're Mr. Holland, second grade teacher with that teacher handwriting over there. Lauren, vote to All right, you all happy with this, with what's up there to add on? You all have over here? Yeah, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. 
the budget was presented with Do you remember anything else happening before? I mean, before the board, that's true. That would be no. like December. December. Yeah. That's the survey. Yeah. 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 Ye
brain and open mind to an issue that, are, that had to because I'm also this that as a so people actually have to think possible. about what where they'll try to okay okay things I like to one thing so we have 10 minutes but you're going to interrupt more questions yeah well the next 10 minutes will be another question I am not sure it goes far as a proper, but I would say by by directly asking for community feedback and holding a vote. Except for no, when it was included, like in the app, should, no, should we use that for the more? You got this. <laughs> 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 that's a good deal. Anyway, that was a good deal. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of what's missing with some of these things, but it doesn't support for it, right? Like I, I can't take credit for doing work. I've been lots of doing things. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen this as a benefit, but like I felt like yeah. it, I mean, another it was. was like the the one the of the benefits for me, and I'm hoping others to these processes, is it really was persuasive. Like, I feel like it really sort of made the case and changed minds and illuminated the perspectives. That's mm -hmm. that. that well, and so, so Jill, do you think that was because of the evidence? Was because the evidence was used and data was used? Like, what do you think you brought I was at the round, or is it? I think the testimony was the first draft of the agenda. Was really persuasive, um, but everyone else pretty much had that in front of them. They knew that there was going to be a the volume, um, the volume of testimony. The public um, had seen that it would be voted on. Maybe. If they looked at it, so so the evidence or data right, right, they'd gone around. Right. To see the yeah. Agenda that had been yeah, I'd say that probably for that the people, the one that was on the website. Story certainly does, and data's dropped. That's my understanding. No, no, that's my understanding. Yeah. And the lack of data. Right. Right. Oh, no. They told me, told their friends. I think, yeah. They were activism. Was that, um, you know, was the recognition that there was a lack of data insight, like collection of new data? Was that like an outcome in any way? Well, it, so there were, yeah, we didn't have any specific like a couple of emails that we got. Data from after the was going on. We had a memo that was very old, as an agent signed. Um, and then we're yeah. all so, like, this is the data that we collect. This is when SRO is involved in any case. Right. We didn't have that as a district. Uh huh. Not every subject is the same amount of traffic. I mean, we get broad. The community input was a little bit deep. Uh, the awareness is up there. I think Brian, I sort of want to understand yeah. issues. Yeah, and, and I would agree with you. I don't yeah. think we did anything intentionally to. Oh, whether it was persuasive or not, the board definitely had a deeper understanding of what the history of the SRO Eric, was, what the purpose was, where it mm -hmm. came from. Mm -hmm. you know, the, it really like the lack of, of actual formal structure behind it. Is the previous yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yes. Like big board learning yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. A lot of money back in the school, but not right. I don't think we can take credit for a lot. Right? I mean, I guess angry. I think about just like, you know, <laughs> looking up there, the success that we experience when there's that feedback loop. You know what I mean? Between, and I know we just say community input, but you know what I mean? But when that when that feedback loop is happening, it seems like we can, you know, best do our work um, to ensure that it reflects so you know, on our high experience school, and track team. Um, sorry. On our high school track team, it was Meg who <coughs> like really encouraged a lot of people to yeah. go. So I talked with her about that yeah, beforehand. Yeah. Right. And so I, I wouldn't and say it was sort like of like maybe you weren't wearing your board hat at that time. Right. Right. Like, 
I was on board with like encouraging yeah. the tracking to come. So. Sure. And I I'll give, I'll totally give me a credit and that this is yeah, sort of part of the work that we've been doing um, to, to try to engage our community is that everything is posted on front, Friends of Montpelier Schools and Front Porch Forum. And you usually highlight like this is what we're talking about tonight. So I would say that that's an intentional board action to encourage uh, public input. Thank you for doing that again. Do you have I didn't do things like, every time um, I see it, I'm like, thank you, Mia. Do you have those things like um, you, know, you changed the agenda, right? So like agendas were changed. I'm thinking, something I didn't know you were talking about earlier with Emma was like, I need more time to hear from the community. Yeah. Like, the intentional action then actually changed the agenda, like the the timing of agendas uh -huh. and stuff. That is something that the board has full control. That's the one thing we're taking credit for. <laughs> and I think that an official set of recommendations. I think the other thing that um, another piece for both processes is that um, you all have whether you will admit it or not, tremendous community outreach and are open to hearing things from the community. That's intentional, right? That's not yeah. something that all board, you know, that goes out and seeks, seeks comments and seeks, act. like that's something that you have done intentionally that other boards have. So that would be something else I could Thank you. That openness, well. intentional openness. Yeah. yeah, I think we've set the tone in the community that we are a board that's willing to listen. Yeah, to one more minute to dig in. No, Just a slight uh, anecdote yeah. to demonstrate how long yeah. is the Chicago yeah. Public Schools yeah. board. I learned this from my friend who lives in Chicago. There's no way you can comment. access them. Access them. There's really? You can't email them. You can't show up at a meeting. Oh. They have no. Yeah. Why not? That sounds to violate. It sounds like it violates our uh, ocean law. Those are. Do they not? Do they not? Maybe Illinois. Maybe they different. don't have. Well, those are also salaried positions. They like, that's your job in Chicago to be on the school board. Right. So wouldn't you, you get, think? I don't. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't. But I know that that is a very different dynamic. This is my job too. Right. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't like. They don't have room for anything else. I don't know why that would allow you to. Right. public comment, right. but I think you run on That you, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You have it inside. Okay. Finish that last thought? That's fine. It's a tangent yeah. anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then what we're going to do now is travel. So we need two travelers. Qu decide quickly who's going to be the traveler at your table. Emma. Dan. Dan. want to travel today. We need today. two travelers. <laughs> You guys have really good questions. All right, Jim and sure. I do. Yeah. 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 Compliments of yeah. this morning. Chris is traveling. All right. <laughs> two travelers over here. Mary oh, two for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mary. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah. Don, get the directions yeah. first, please, so you're paying attention. Oh, Here's what we're going to do. The travelers are going to switch, okay? The traveler's main job is to listen and ask clarifying questions. Thus, the sentence starters, if you need help with clarifying questions, right? It's not to answer or to add, or it's it's more of like, hey, did you think about in different ways, okay? The people who stay, who are not traveling, your job is to explain your conversation, all right? And you have 10 minutes to do this. So the idea is what I used to tell my second graders, right? If no one's talking, it's your turn to talk, first of all. And then the second one is, um, stay in the conversation, right? So no question is dumb, remember? So those sentences are out. How come you focused on this? How come? Who wasn't talking to you then? And, you know, like those kind of questions are really good questions to dig deep. You have 10 minutes, mm -hmm. so stay in it for 10 minutes. And are we just asking about how this the, the question. positive, okay. Yep, yep, just the question we're on. We'll have more questions to get to okay, All right, travelers, travel. Can we put it up on the wall so the travelers can see it? And so you we, have you. 10 minutes to your chair. Where are we going to sit? <laughs> <laughs> My legs are really tired from a really long weekend of farming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. So the bar. You want to talk. Talk about like what your conversation was. Tell us. Okay. What happened so here? We honed in on just a few benefits that the board could say we intentionally did something to um, make occur. We got a large amount of community input, which um, was overwhelmingly in support of the track. And we, it increased public awareness in general. 
And what the board did was we directly asked the public for feedback at a meeting and in um, a few other little outreach things like a post. I remember Amanda posting on Front Porch Forum. Um, and we postponed the vote. We you know changed the agenda to postpone the vote to the next meeting to allow the space for that. And we have established a sort of reputation or um, vibe that the board is really open to input. So that's that's how we answered those questions. So if you kind of I think go to an earlier process. I mean, didn't the board also do some engagement with what's like asking or creating space for the students to come in? The student so presentation, presentation in like August? August? Yeah. Was it August? It was, I think it was in, in like, spring. It was in early spring, yeah. yeah. Well before my... I don't remember the board asking for that presentation. Did they ask for it or did they say, hey, we got something to show you? It was a combination of the two. I think we... Kind of worked with it was a project that Matt put together. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a reach out that we were like open and willing, and then they okay. put in the ask. So like engage the student body is a yeah. I think like I think it's like creating opportunities for student presentations. Mm -hmm. I was to say, like, yeah, you know, just the budget process in general, because it was, you know, presented in various options through. I recall that there was like a specific makeup. Yeah, having Andrew come in and talk about it, or like talk about it as part of larger, yeah, you know, larger packages. Yeah, that was a big part of all that ESSER possibility. Yeah, created a lot. Of, I don't know about momentum, but. Need like we really needed to figure out what to do with all this. How, which money is going to be used where, and what's the most what's the most effective way to do this, and what is. We did a lot of reach out and through affinity spaces for you know the affinity spaces. We almost we almost gasped them when it was ESSER infrastructure funding, and then it hasn't. The affinity spaces haven't been as. Um, you know, uh, a large part of the vision process that Nathan was hoping for mm -hmm. because I think that they were kind of they put out a lot of information and then they sort of were said we did that already I see we don't want to do that again I, I got I don't know exactly yeah but it definitely um, there's only so many times I guess you can ask <clears throat> and it all turned and into a lot of it was based on infrastructure needs and in infrastructure spending. And I feel like that's it's almost unfortunate that those groups of people with their different perspectives and, and needs and concerns use all their energy to talk about infrastructure stuff. So like, like organizations, so like different organizations that there was a lot of organizations. I feel like the infrastructure can help a little bit with some of the needs and concerns from some of our community groups. How would you say, Rent, that that's related to the process we went through? Well, what the board did or didn't do? Yeah, one of the things I'm thinking about is like, there are all these conversations about different ways to spend money and then it sort of the ESSER funds were going to go to Windows that freed up the, the, the general fund and then that was available for the track and, and there were all these sort of domino you know what I mean like there are all these stages that, was, that ended up with the track um, not to have and it was all sort of like. If there was people that were in favor or opposed, like from different perspectives. I don't know. It, 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 it suddenly we were we ended up voting on a track. Like, That's kind of what it felt like. Yeah. yeah. But there was a lot of work yeah, so with a lot of funding and a lot of different needs. Yeah. 
other people's um, actual and it we maybe it was it was I'm somewhat sure. overwhelming and it was hard to sort of foresee how you would what it would look like at the end what, or to sort of what, like the fine zoom what the findings of our, of our research, research was mm -hmm. yeah and all of our stakeholder engagement so were there not recommendations yeah it was there there, there, was, okay. yeah, there, there were, were recommendations right. we had recommendations yeah like next I steps i think we had like recommendations in like in the case of like removing an office so I feel like, like the SRO, here that, like, are options. We presented options, but I don't think, we didn't say you should remove the SRO. Oh, no, but you did re recommendations so like, like, for example, oh, restorative justice practices. Justice practices, yeah. you, practices you have recommendations yeah. to your uh, yeah. Yeah. mental health resources. Yeah. Like, more so you did have some recommendations. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you said that you wouldn't have known really the, I guess, the views of other people if there was a vote, but was it like kind of a unanimous set of findings or was there some contention? Um, there wasn't any contention about the research and, and like the stakeholder feedback. It wasn't like that yet. But I mean, like Jill said, there was, it was, just interesting because the process was so long. <laughs> we put that length of time, made priority for length of time. The process was so long. It was very thorough, I felt like. And we spent many, many, many hours. I don't, don't know if I ever tallied the hours. Oh, he's you've got the <laughs> presentation right here. Um, but so by the end of it, I felt like it was... It, for me, it was a very enlightening process. It was, and it felt very clear. As a board member, when I took my vote, I felt clear. Um, so that was helpful, because if we had tried to make the vote, the outcome might have been the same, you know? But we didn't do all that work to, like, feel really confident. So I think that was very intentional, and I think it helped all the board members feel confident in, me, in taking a vote. Did you? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, I felt really well informed and persuaded. Well, and got to see that. I yeah. appreciate you bringing us back. So um, is, I think maybe what I hear Brett saying is like, it's so one thing we've seen is we did. You, a lot so this is, uh, I'm trying to think of these questions. Around the number of. Um, it, it wasn't all so we kind of I'm trying to be a traveler. Like, like we made it a priority. We had a standing board meeting. We, we had a committee. Different various ways. You know, those were sort of the intentional of this space created, and, and a committee to the tension. Yeah. Like had multiple strategies and included that as board members. members we had not. And then the benefits were things like and and then this the and also saying like the sort of like side that we heard that we finish up the thought awareness some of the folks that we engaged in that community and we benefited yeah. from it now sort of feeling like well informed I guess what I'm what I'm thinking of is this was probably the most contentious thing we've done on the board in terms of like the community having strong feelings about it one way or the other. And um and I just wonder like intentionally what we did to sort of like manage those mixed feelings in our community. Okay, so and I think a lot of this is travelers say thank you very much. Move back okay. to your group. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Move back to your group for being here. Travelers and people who stayed at home. You just had three minutes, just quick three minutes of like this is what we thought more about. Okay? Just quick three minutes. This is what we thought more about. So go ahead. Um, well, it was helpful to have Emma come over because she was sort of providing some illumination about what was provided here, that there were findings that were presented to the board with sort of next step recommendations, but not like, here, we've decided this is what you need to do. Not for our returning Right. And we, we filled out our list of stakeholders a little bit more clearly to make it really clear that the board intentionally and the committee intentionally proactively included voices from different perspectives instead of a sort of self-selected group. We had city officials, police, administration, students, 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 <laughs> okay, here's your next question. Okay, so you can kind of put a pin in that in your brain cell. The next question is, what are the drawbacks of this type of process 
and what role did the board play in creating these drawbacks? Okay, that's your next question. You have to go ahead and discuss that. What are the drawbacks for the planning process? What role did the board play in creating them? I have you right there. 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 What are the open community feedback, or I guess, you know, just like free community play feedback play without like a structure to it, is that you're gonna, the people who are going to comment on the track project or a project with some kind of goal are gonna be ones who are already kind of in support of it. Kind of, the echo chamber, like yeah. it's sort of like drawing an echo chamber. Right. So like the process you, invites the, the vocal minority or the yeah, I, would, I, don't know yeah. Yes. I don't. I don't necessarily know if it's a minority. But well, yes, I think I, the more vocal people, yeah. Yeah. which might not be totally reflective of everyone, especially the people who might be more impartial to it. Yeah, who might be just be like, eh. yeah. I don't know. Here's a little bit What's the second part of the question again? What, are, what role did the board play in creating these drawbacks? So for that drawback. I feel like it's sort of like I mean, it's lack of to be reactive reactive um, common to be understanding of the timeline of that decision. Right. And in that lack of common understanding, we didn't, I don't feel the, like we did yeah, an appropriate board, right? amount of work to try to draw feedback from other people. Like there wasn't a lot of time in my mind to do stakeholder engagement around this question. So we were reacting to <laughs> But I mean, should it have been on my radar? Yeah. I guess so. But I just feel like it could have been more collaborative I mean, I part as a board to be like, okay, here are some of the big decisions that we're thinking about, big ticket items like that we're thinking about spending money yeah. on. Yeah. Here's our budget timeline. Here's the SFO yeah. timeline. Yeah. Like, I feel like we could have been more intentional about like, let's make sure that we all feel confident that our community is buying into these big decisions and which one they're yeah. most excited but about. You the school year at the time, like, yeah. So I don't know how to work that. <laughs> but if, if we're talking specifically about sort of like drawing uh, the vocal people in, it's about, I see that as like, it takes a lot of time and effort and like, and, and um, strategy and intention to draw people in that, like to seek people out that might have disagreed with that decision so yeah. to create yeah. space yeah. in, in case people do. Yeah. Well, and maybe what we could have done, and I know that when yeah. the administrators did this yeah. around the ESSER yeah. was, yeah. Um, yeah. In, in asking yeah. ESSER questions, yeah. was like, there are many things we could spend well, this money on. Maybe it's more yeah. like, rather yeah. than yeah. considering yeah. To the voting yeah. on spending yeah. one and a half million dollars so to upgrade the, the track. track, what do you think yeah. about that? We could have painted a broader picture and said, "Here is what we imagine we could spend this money on, and we'd like to get you to like rank them or something." I don't know. That's probably not like the best answer, but it's a way of yeah, um, it was like um, massive happening. Uh, something not really. I don't know of, of demonstrating. I think what you're talking about, at, or or like drawing out people who maybe the track isn't the, at the top of their radar, but if they. So, oh, they're also potentially considering net zero or whatever. Then they don't have to think of it themselves. Right. Um, and we did get a few other, you know, a, a tiny minority of people who I mean, who I spoke think it's out uh, saying net zero or could you think of X or Y instead of this? Like and when we focus on the little pieces the instead of having a global picture. So you, that there so are lots of things pop up like that are in the global picture that we hadn't even noticed. So, for example, so we, a memo so that is all Those are things that should be in the global right. pictures of like how we look at the systems. And so when it right. gets we, popped, we're talking about what did the board do? Right? Then that and, that's and how I, de I definitely do that. I think there's a lot of credit for as they were doing of all the S of thinking. Like, here so are space, right? lots of okay. options. So the like, outside contexts are always going to And then I think what pop happened in. is, and if we they have, took so there was no kind of out, established board vision to kind of bring these things through. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's that. I mean, I think we had. We have all the access to all of that. Like we had done 
Yeah, we had we put in like our DDI policy, which I think was a really good guide for that. So in some ways, we were proactive. And then things like like I'm sure there's a million memos floating around this district on you know, small employment arrangements that the board has no idea about. So I'm not sure we can really blame ourselves for not knowing about some of those things. Um, well, this just from my perspective. Is this a special discussion around that? Oh, like disagreeing on the thing. Oh, no, 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 and there was a lot of like just sort of like this is the first time I've ever heard this. And so like I don't, you know, yeah, I, I know. How do you get? How do you sort of articulate? Because I think you're right that like specific things come up, but they're actually a sort of a symptom of a bigger thing. That put it out there. Put it out there. Try to add context for the concept of all the time trying to get. And you can't really solve it without their magic picture. So like, what is sort of the magic dust that we can like sort of go on this process? Enjoy it in the form of a question. Sorry. Um, sorry. No. So I think it's a great example. I think there's lots of and I do not it's the same sort of idea, right? It's like it's a it's a issue that's a symptom of a larger thing that we have to make the time to address. Or even the understanding of what the process is and I mean a drawback is that it requires sort of an immediate response, but then a much bigger, longer board deeper for gaining perspective or deeper examination of the issues we see. Like, okay, well these things are these processes are out there. They're I get to have listening sessions and the survey. And again, it feels weird to talk about drawbacks because I do feel like it was a good process. Exactly. We did some listening sessions during ESSER funds. But I guess the time, I think it's about a common understanding of sort of the timeline of these like, okay, be very intentional about, you know. Just so you guys know, my daughter tested positive, so that's why she was super careful. I tested before I came, and I tested last night, I tested before I came, and I feel fine, but I just feel very, sorry, but that's how you're doing. Is she feeling okay? No, she's sick. I didn't realize that, so it's just, I don't know. The dance was totally worth it. Yeah. That was my favorite. It's after the drop. It requires me a response, but demands a deeper dig. Yeah, learning to come up with an appropriate response or appropriate. You know, in a sense of it together. Yeah. And but demands that that sounds good. Yeah. Between those sessions, right? There's some sort of disconnect. There is a disconnect. Yes. Yes. Does yes. that make sense? Yes. yes. And some of it might just be process. Because I don't know if it's a drawback, drawback but so it's challenging. It's hard it's to like, yeah, well, yeah. make sure yeah. you're yeah. genuinely yeah. hearing from right. the and voices who aren't proactively like, coming to the table. So, so to do. Yes. right? Yes. In between, <laughs> it would be easier to just you know, you're not gonna come to every one-on-one parent hear from people who proactively reach out. But it was a challenge to. I don't know, that might genuinely be get to draw back. Just it might be a natural draw back. The voices that need to be heard. Do something about. Maybe that's still kind of part of number one, just that it's intensive so and time consuming, but worth it. Board process. And it could also Maybe be like an um, that's a unawareness, sort of like because unawareness of the problem just because of like like the makeup of the board in terms of like I mean there's not like there were not like students on the board um, there were not like a lot of like BIPOC people on the board and it's not to say like you should you should appoint people because of that but like you can't be like aware of the problem like a bigger like a systemic problem you can't really be aware of that if it doesn't like affect you daily or directly like it takes it takes you being proactive to see that and like that's difficult to do if you don't have like community being like this is a problem and so I feel like that's general why it came up when it did. Sure, I feel like so board makeup did not reflect the community's the major decisions. So or did not set that. I don't know. Reflect like the identities of the individuals that we really needed to hear from. Draw that. That's true. Or like, just. I think the role that we. I think just like led the board makeup led to a lack of awareness. It's more like direct. Oh, right. We didn't. 
experience. Not I don't know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, that, that's what I would write. Is like we're not lack of it's, organization. It's like we have about two more minutes with this one with your group. The role that we played. It's almost like what didn't we do? And, or what don't we do on a regular basis? Lack of organization and and like that's a problem I think across everywhere, not yeah, like and I was specific even, to the Montpelier yeah, school board. Yeah, I think board. it's that, and it's like does that feel accurate? This part feels a little bit. Well, let's see if I can get this all out. But I so so later today we're going to be trying to set some goals. I'm not sure that I think a, a drawback is also we're going to be able to anticipate because of what Zach we'll just mentioned, which is being able to hear. Yeah. There may be a like a from impact the community that just happens in March. Um, we don't, we don't, we don't yeah, by the way, so yeah. yeah, and so it's like what we need to do is both like how you process the information, um, set goals that impact the community, and how you best have to do it. Like, here's what you bet fall within the I don't like. Um, draw back and like, it's just we're like, challenged. Yeah, it's the challenge. Yeah, yeah there's an emotional toll for those testifying and providing information. Yeah. Yeah. And when we have but also, like, also like, from, from, like, we from have yes, to processing give ourselves the, the space to. Is there another perspective there, too, in things. terms so I of I think there's uh, two things at this particular yeah. process? It's a pretty charged issue, right? Yeah, um, and solid goals uh, that we're working toward, and there's and discomfort from that makes progress towards those, those who are sharing their story that, were, that are directly yeah. negatively impacted. And and there's also so that it's a toll on the people who didn't choose to speak and they have supported meetings of police. Mm -hmm. supported the SRO position. Yeah. We didn't hear yeah. much about it. <laughs> yep. So, so there's like two, like why, Sorry. my question would be, why didn't we? Um, so there might be something in there around a drawback of like exclusion or? I'm not sure if exclusion is the right because nobody said you can't speak, right? <laughs> but there, there is this, it's almost a, a political chargedness to the issue. And they do uh, in this particular like community she does her superintendent report. that may have influenced so like who's going to do this. Behind the scenes decision making that's happening. She also takes a lot. Yeah, of I mean, we for, did like, get on like all the surveys we did. We and it's constant. I don't know. Like again, like that. The same thing could apply. Yeah. Even if it's like anonymous. Right. Topic, it could apply from like, multiple perspectives. So. Yeah. I don't think we got like a full lot of yeah. like I mean, I guess with this strong support. There were definitely people who were like. There were definitely people who were like, "This is a thing." I feel like it was overwhelmingly. I don't think that the neutral or like oh, leaning not, negative. Yeah, 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 I think you guys did hear from some people. We totally did, yeah. Yeah, I think but what like, I was saying is just like Mia saying, sort of like set from an emotion, like the questions, the questions like the drawback for the board as board members take on yeah. what are the those stories and like coming out for the board emotionally so also exactly. and do the how you understand it and how you feel it and yeah yeah that changes your dna these things happening in the community that one of the drawbacks that we did play okay role. finish that thought go ahead and finish my thought was that we asked the question of should we spend the money on the track rather than not necessarily open ended like what should we spend the money on but here's what we're imagining we could spend the money on what are your thoughts because by asking it in an open-ended way, like as a yes or no, I guess that's not open-ended. Yeah, in a closed way, as a yes or no, um, we limited what the feedback was going to be that we got. We did ask that though. Yeah, thought exchange I way earlier. Right. I mean, I mean, when it was time, yeah, when it was time to make like, a vote, we could be asking for a different. You know, we could be asking for them to report out on something different, like. Here's what we anticipate right. you're going to need to make decisions on in the next few weeks. Our travelers Based on our understanding of the process. are going to travel. Same travelers. So our oh, same so travelers and up. Thank oh. you. Come on over. It's the same process. Explain your conversation. I think this is one of the hardest roles. And remember really that it. drawbacks is just a conversation. It's nobody point your fingers at anybody, right? Just conversations to get information out and more information so we can be honest and my friend Mary Shimmer wants to get your question starters. Feedback is just data. It's just information. All right. All right. So Jill or Zach, go ahead and start sharing. And Mia or Rhett or Sage, like me to take a step. Sure. Okay. And then you can. One of the things that we were talking about is. So we've 
first we really wanted to be clear that a drawback doesn't mean it was the wrong thing to do like we do feel like this was a successful yeah um but there were definitely uh, a pretty massive time and intensity commitment to that yes um that it was coming at a time where we had a lot of pretty insane competing priorities it was at the height of um, covid and planning school years and coming off of multiple months of remote learning and it, it um, and you know it came at a time when the first were like we can't deal with these two crises within a crisis at the same time yeah. Um, and that something like this is sort of a symptom of a larger problem, so it might require an immediate response, but then the board's reaction to that, or their response yeah. to the resolution to that, is a much bigger challenge. Um, it was really challenging to genuinely hear from the voices that needed to actually be heard from. Um, at the time, the board didn't have student members and had um, really wasn't a very diverse board, so it really that's sort of a lack of sort of immediate first so person experience. Um, there was definitely an emotional had, toll on those who have, provided like, their testimony and yeah. also well, on board members sort of taking on and owning and truly listening to that process that and how there was, you know, that was an okay, high sorry. High emotional <laughs> expense sorry. on all sides um, that because it was so politically charged, it might have influenced who came and who did not come because it was sort of very heated. Um, and then, yeah, because in light of that, you know, uh, the the voices yeah, that were heard from or not heard from might have been impacted by the political nature of that issue. Um, yeah. So, so what role did the board play in creating those? I mean, again, yeah, we created the system as the process of the space to have these conversations, and we sat and listened and were present and had the priority of each board meeting. So again, on the drawbacks, it's a little <laughs> weird because we sort of think um, this was a good we also the jack of like it was when the needed to be done. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have anything else to add. So we also like bring that perspective. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, how, like, what's, like, what's our realistic so role and our best role in terms of a process like um, this versus the way I think some of us would ideally you know, like, like to make decisions, which is like we get it at the beginning and, and you know, kind of like the way we do with yeah, you know, something that where it might be more of a full-time job where we're like really on top of the details and seeing the bigger picture rather than seeing these like kind of snippets and and seeing if it checks with the broader kind of community consensus and direction that i think we have agreed about. can you repeat your question i think my question is how do we, like within the the drawbacks which i think all make sense like like what's kind of the board role? Like, and how can the like does the role invite these drawbacks or how are we responsible for that as a board? Like, what did we do to like not allow how could the role of the like how would change to prevent some of these drawbacks? Yeah, or like you know, would would the role change to be like more proactive in terms of getting like deeper into these conversations or are we okay kind of being a check and also being a balance in terms of you know when the community does come with big ass or we go to the community and we hear something that doesn't seem to jive with what we're hearing well i think one of the complicating factors here is that voting on budget matters does fall directly within our role and so it is actually our decision to make whereas there are other times where it's actually more the administrator's decision to make on lots of other things and so maybe what that maybe to answer your question it one way to categorize when we would need to have more of a role to play in the process are those moments where we are the ones making the decision. And not, I don't mean the role to play in the process like we crunch all the numbers necessarily, but 
that we, I, mean, I, I do think there was more we could have done leading up to it to um, coalesce the feedback that we had been getting over along the way and understand how we were going to use that feedback and also coalesce the information that we had been getting at, at sort of disparate points from the administration about you're probably not um, have a usually around ESSER right. and and, and put all that sense. together as you were saying so are we with this is what this is what's coming up for the administration and yeah, this is what's coming up from the community that. and actually because be able to do that balance to help have us make the decision I felt like that um, because I know that we heard a lot from the community about lots of different things when we were asking other questions that were unrelated to the track and we could have probably used that information, but I didn't feel like the, the way the process played out, I had enough, like, yes. I didn't have that all organized. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, like, able to apply so all of that feedback mm -hmm. that we had been getting. And I also know we had gotten a lot of information from the administration over the year on thoughts they were having about how to spend this incredible influx of money. and. What did the board do to create I felt a little bit more in kind of command of that information okay. because it felt a little bit more at my fingertips. And so well, I, I remember really being wrong. like, oh, OK, I can look back so, at that great I'm spreadsheet that Libby and Grant put together that I was like, yeah. Two more minutes. here are the sources of funding, and here's what we could spend it on. And being like, oh, OK, I can kind of put those dots together. But I, I felt less in command of us. all of the feedback we had been receiving around from the community over the course of the year around spending. Do you see an opportunity for more yeah, work at the committee like level to support like that kind of, like, you know, okay, that, that kind of work of like co like you know, yeah. work, this committee, like, this is our, this falls kind of within our focus area. Like we're going like, to do like the groundwork of coalescing and all that info and making sure we get it to the board yeah, prior to like a decision point. I think that's a good, and we're not supposed to talk about solutions, but right. I think that's a good thought, thought for how it could go differently, where the committee could say, here's everything that we've been, we're going to do a little bit of that groundwork to compile and almost like say, here's, the, here's our best information to help us make this decision. One more minute. There you go. And now then as individual board members, we can take that in and maybe probably ask more questions yeah, and so think, anyway but i don't know so yeah i think it could be an excuse i don't know where yeah. we fall well, we could take it or leave it if it's like that there was a if there wasn't but i think just it, to just to get back to your to see if it was question least, right? you know and Jim, what we would think was like what role should we have played i think maybe what my opinion is that i think we should have played a larger role in being able to understand all of the information that we had because it was our decision to make rather than us just kind of like double checking what the administration was doing since it's a budget decision more people maybe we don't know but like so someone okay finish up their thoughts they could just keep I do think that vision work when we get it to where we want it to be is going to make all right travelers say thank you very much well that's good to hear travel back well I mean three minutes to report back to your original group opportunities thank you and we have thank you feedback fits into different what we have things to do, people. <laughs> so I was not yeah. expecting to try right on so much this morning. All right, three minutes starts now. We'll just tell you what you yes. said. Yes. Yes. Three minutes. Yes. I like COVID, and I'm like, that's so Go ahead. So, I, uh, so Poshmark. Sure. I'll be your personal well, shopper. Yeah. Or you Stitch Fix is another one. They do mm -hmm. like. I, got, I think like, I got this dress from Stitch Fix. Focus, yeah. focus, yeah. focus. Yeah. Sorry. Two minutes left. We're talking fashion apps over here. <laughs> That's my hand me down. Huh. This yeah. is my hand me down. Yeah. You, you should give me your hand me down. Okay. Wait, okay. right. school <laughs> board clothing <laughs> swap. Yes. <laughs> For July, optional. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our travelers pushed us a bit on how does how did we what role did we play in creating some of these issues? Like, could we receive mm -hmm. public comment in a way that might change the hot button? Although, as I pointed out, to you know, there are other outside factors like sort of community pressure and peer pressure and parental 
pressure. You know, people don't always sort of want to step out in a small community like this. Mm -hmm. If they feel like they're going to be in the minority, they'd rather just sort of stay silent and wait and see, you know, especially with like Facebook and Front Porch Forum and all these ways people can kind of try to squash an opinion that's not the same as theirs. So what can the board do to... And like, honestly, like, I think if we were having this conversation now after what happened in Texas the other week, it might be a slightly, we have a very it might be a slightly different conversation. I mean, I think we might end up at the same place, but mm -hmm. I think we'd be hearing more about. I think our goal too is mm -hmm. not current events do sort of influence our priorities. Like we're I guess what it makes me think about is the value of school board members being really visible in the community, in our communities, and really putting ourselves out there, you know, so that people kind of build, A, an understanding of who we are, you know, and really perceive us as people that are here to listen to a mix and a diversity, a variety of different opinions, you know. Even though they might not come up and talk to you at the farmer's market, if they see that, like, on the weekly, you have, you know, a table there and that you are genuinely interested in, you know, does the community value athletics yeah. to this level? I don't know. Yeah. You know, and it was kind of like this question mark for me. Yeah. So I love that there's the visioning work that can help me <laughs> understand the values of the community a little bit better. But well, and one thing that I realized in hindsight, because I think Rhett, you brought hey, it up, up that thought? referencing those different um, feedback sessions that we've had all over the last year. Um, I've now realized, you know, a month and a half too late, that that it was community feedback that we didn't bring in to the process. Again, I think because we were posing the question as, should we spend this money on the track, yes or no, and then therefore we got a huge amount of community input in that moment in favor of the track, and it was hard to balance that with Even the needs that, that were coming through for special ed, and, yes. you know. Anyway, okay. So 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 exactly. Okay. Here is our last question. That and don't worry, we're not leaving it after this. We are, we're going to process as a whole group afterwards. But um, the last question is what assumptions were made before, during, and after this process? So what assumptions did you make as a board, individually, yeah. that kind of thing, before, during, and after this process? So you have 10 minutes to talk about that. Go. Well, probably certainly that this was precisely what the community wanted, or mm -hmm. the whole of the community wanted. I think as I came in after this, but I think I had just a general um, assumption that the school felt safer to the students in the community. You know, like this, this decision had been made and people felt, you know, appeased and heard and people felt safer in the schools based on the fact that there was no longer an SRO, based on my very limited kind of understanding of what happened. Yeah, and there might also be an assumption that some people feel less safe. Yep. Right. I think that could be added. I mean, yeah. yeah. Can I put words in your mouth? <laughs> you already said it, so I just want to flag it here that there was an assumption that this community conversation was only based on. The uh, George Floyd. The staff. And and so I think like the before, the context that you heard, but Longer. that's not necessarily has impacted but communities. There was another really context that happened. Which I was think an there's interaction there's with the police that which is what sparked this work. So like mm. it's, 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 that's, it wasn't just George Floyd, it was the fact that there was an interaction with the Yeah, I I think I think there was a yeah. yeah I think there was an assumption it was no it was char I think I think it was and these are assumptions these are assumptions yeah. exactly yes so there's two I I would not necessarily here. say that I would say that George Floyd I think 
I think there are two things that triggered it. One, I think Matt and I they left, and the new SRO came in and made some mistakes. And it drew attention to the fact we had this position that, frankly, was working before before we had a good, because we had a good person doing it well. So it was, that's what I'm saying, that it was yeah. an assumption, not the facts. Yeah. So I was one of the organizers. Yes. That the facts are good. Yeah, um, and then I think there is an assumption that, that George Floyd added to how the mega fund. Yeah, that it was amplified by George Floyd. Taking care of, we did, because we did have that. I think there was an assumption that all yeah. students felt really safe within the process. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, okay, this is like checking a lot of the boxes that are that I had been hearing about in yeah. all of those concessions. So it was sort of like that my assumption was sort of like I actually I actually now we have this extra money. I think I think honestly, so I don't think the board gave much thought to the SRO. Right, I think there are some people on the board who might not have even know there was an SRO mm -hmm. until there was the incident with a new person and which mm -hmm. people brought to your attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if there was. So that's a maybe this is what I was thinking. Like the things are working fine. I don't know uh, that the board. An assumption was that. No, I like I actually had the assumption that we did not have an armed officer on campus. Like mm -hmm. that. That to me was news. Well, I was still under the um, thinking that as a bit like dare when we were in school, no. where I was like there was a dare officer because the drug alcohol right whatever the R and E stood for, right? That it was an unarmed police officer who like talked to kids about drugs. Right. <laughs> that was my assumption. I mean even like the high school I went to to like you know, I haven't visited in a while, but like now I know they, they have like an armed person at the door and metal detectors. And I just assumed that we did not have a presence like that you in our school. Like, so, yeah. you know, those <laughs> things just, such a um, Right, our SROs smoked yeah. cigarettes with the kids yeah. out back. That's how it's Chicago. <laughs> and that was relationship building yeah. in the yeah. 1990s. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I, I saw, you know, we had, in reality, yeah, you know, the, the fact that students could could walk out and go to lunch and not get chased down by someone and come back. I I really my assumption was we didn't have that we had a, a pretty open and free campus for everyone. That's what you assume. Yeah. 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 So I will admit that an assumption I had during the process was, was that everyone had already made up their minds. Myself included. Yeah, that was the wrong assumption. Mm -hmm. Five minutes. Make sure you try to hit every every aspect before, during, and after. So that was the basic the start of what you said. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but I guess another assumption might be great. We did that. Done. Social moving on, right? So. Yeah. Our work here yeah. is done or something like that, that like we did it, it's done. Right. So just to get another assumption. I, I, I actually, yeah, yeah. I'm exactly. saying the assumption, it's not right. Well, I had an assumption that it's different from our deal, that, which was that we're going to fill all those recommendations from the committee. Mm -hmm. This is a really hard question for me to answer on the assumptions before because I'm having a hard time thinking about and before the whole process started as in April of 2021 I definitely wasn't I don't think I had any assumptions because I just wasn't even wasn't on my radar and then I would say even before that March meeting where we got the feasibility, the track feasibility study presented to us. I'm trying to think back to prior to that and like, what was I assuming about our need to make a, de like a decision on the track? I don't really feel like I had any because again, it just wasn't. It wasn't on the radar. On but my looking radar. back now in hindsight, I would have assumed that we would have more warning before a big a one point yeah. five million dollar decision was to be made. Yeah. So I don't know what that what I would be assuming, but just that it would be on that agenda graph of a here's what's happening on future agendas, like right. one point five million vote. <laughs> Something right. like that, um, and and I still don't really know like when it was decided like we're right. going to be voting on this meeting this this meeting day because it seems like they decided sort of maybe Jim and Libby together decided 
that week because the agenda was changed. Yeah. So I guess my assumption is like, I, I just assume sort of like that Jim will be guiding, alerting the board when huge decisions are coming up, like further in advance. Yeah. I certainly agree with your assumption about like the issues that we heard in listening sessions or through the surveys are being addressed in other ways. Like we have the assumption that I don't know, like net zero is going to be potentially addressed a few years down the line. So that's, I'd say that's an assumption, but I'm sure and, it's the and same you're broader kind of issues. Making that assumption now, like even right. now, like moving forward, I have that same assumption <laughs> <laughs> that it is on our radar. Like net zero now is on our radar, and that my assumption is that we will start, you know, and that we already are doing work to sort of tackle that and move towards that and create policy around it and pay attention to it in future budgets. Um, I have another one that is bias. D during the process, I made the assumption that those who had something to say about this will come forward and say it, whether it's in favor or... Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I also assume... Sorry. Oh, assume. Let him talk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, that those who Two more minutes. have something to say either deep. in favor or deep deep. against, will come forward and say it. Um, I have a lot of faith and, and trust in our admin team. So like, I make a lot of assumptions that they, they have their finger on the pulse. They know what's best for the district. Like that so they're that an listening to the community, that they're receiving the feedback. Yeah. Um, you know, Andrew LaRosa, I have a lot of faith in him. I make a lot of assumptions that he's like, you know, uh, making the best priorities for the schools in how we spend our money. And when he makes minute. presentations, I'm, you know, having a lot of faith and trust in those presentations. So I do have a level of like, it's almost like it creates a little bit of complacency. The same with the budget. A little overall. bit, with yeah. Trust in, so much trust in grant and budget and yep. where money comes from. And the process that they have to like set that budget, you know, with internally. So I just have a lot of faith in that. So I just sort of like relax into it maybe a little too much. Okay, travelers, ready to go? <laughs> Travelers, go ahead, travel to your fabulous destination. Islands. I know, travel to your own island. Talk through it. It's left handed. It's left handed. Ten minutes. Ten Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Think back um, on what there your assumptions were. About, you know, current events overtaking, but we and everything collectively time. pretty much agree that with you know, all of these, even so if we weren't the person to say them, that, that like we assume that this is this the, the, the track was what the community wanted, or that there was assumed that money can't solve some of those other systemic issues um, that we had been hearing about over the course of different feedback sessions, um, and kind of coinciding with that one, that many of those larger issues were already funded or being addressed based on information we had had from the budget process. Um, so an example of that would be um, other positions that the administration was adding into the budget to handle um, like literacy intervention, for example. Um, an assumption we had before the process started was that the board would have more notice prior to a big budget vote like this during so that those who have input to give, whether it's in favor of or in opposition to, will just come forward. They'll just on their you know decide on their own if the board needs to hear from me. And we have an assumption kind of all throughout all of this before, during, and after that the administration has a good grasp on what the community needs, wants. I think I would add one other thing I heard and would add to that is like not just a grasp on what the community needs once, but that they're yeah, this is pretty comprehensive. The way Emma put it was like we just have a lot of faith that they are doing that due diligence mm -hmm. 
with within the numbers, not just what the community it's needs wants, but then also yeah, like, can this actually happen? Like they've done the work to like, sort of mm -hmm. they've done the math. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so um, it's yeah. really eye-opening to That's see other we, people's assumptions. Landon, yeah, why did you <laughs> assume that? No. Mm -hmm. I would uh, add, uh, to add like that. Um, I assume yeah. 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 people um, will be open to it. Yeah. yeah. So, this is all for a How do we do? Right? Great. <laughs> no, I know that's trying not to come up with a meaningful answer. question <laughs> to keep going. I guess I'm thinking, like, do, are, do any of these, now that you may have had this list before you, do any of them feel particularly like a hot or like dangerous or like, hmm, like, you know, this type of assumption is something that we really need to keep in mind, you know, mm. as we move forward? And, our next series of decisions. I, uh, an assumption that concerns me is that there are going to be the right people to fill the positions that we identify that we need. I'm not sure if they exist. I'm not sure if there are enough people becoming teachers. I'm not sure if there are enough special educators. I'm not sure if there are enough people willing to work in the schools to be um, at the level of also, like, the ratios and you know class sizes that were what was normal 10 years ago. I don't know if that is going to be the case going forward. I don't know if major reevaluating how things go is going to be necessary because there's not enough people to fill the positions no matter how many you create. That's what kind of one of the things that we're running into. There's positions posted for years. You have to get like one applicant. Or, yeah. These are, I think, the things that cause sleepless nights for people like Libby. Yeah. I think about this stuff and I'm like, are we on the brink of public education collapse? Like, yeah. this is going to happen. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, I guess I would just think about like, what is the learning that can come out of these assumptions and the act of making these assumptions and what gaps do they create? Like, did you think about like gaps? that might have been the result of any of these particular assumptions. Things that we missed, like the creation of certain blind spots that are then, you know, preempt us from doing like our best work or our most inclusive work and equitable work. Well, for me, it's the one with those with input will come forward. I think it does create a really big gap. Um, and. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. That's one, so that's one I would carry forward as we start to think about the folks and as a way of, like, we should check that assumption. Like, so what? On a regular so basis. You know, like, all of that, like, the emotional toll and everything, it's like... And, well, yeah, is there also another assumption we make, too, that those that come forward so represent the is, community uh, consensus? Yeah. It includes it, so you know, there's uh -huh. a yeah. to have a question process yeah. instead yeah. of just calling a vote. So I almost always assume that a process is needed. <laughs> mm. Or those who disagree and what were some of the most interesting the things that came up in the decision in the in the discussion around assumptions for you? Maybe that there were there were could be competing assumptions that all those people in the room. Right. Like one guy who was on Zoom who was speaking up at zero points about. Some That's people really assumed that everything was fine and that, and, yeah. and that we didn't need to change. And I was, I, I don't think I was like that really lately, but that was more like where I started. It was like, I, I needed to be convinced apparently, but I was very thoroughly convinced and a better person for it, but like I had to go through this process to, to get there. Um, and that I am humbled now to know that there were a lot of students who didn't feel safe because of that. I didn't know that. You know, so, um, yeah, I think that there can be competing assumptions about each other or about the process. Yeah. Like Merrick said, you know, sometimes like, oh, are we just doing this for the sake of like, to show everyone how much we care, but we're not actually listening. And I think this, we actually listen and, and learn. I think there's also the assumption that we know everything that happens in the school um, and stories like this for example it's not easy for a BIPOC student to just like share freely with every teacher that 
They yeah. might not have one teacher that they feel safe with. So I think that, you know, it's like the assumptions that if we, if we don't hear from people, then all is good. Right, right. Oh, that's a good one. Sort of like no news is good news. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also, everyone's gone to school in some capacity, so we all think we're experts, right? Correct. Like everyone literally can talk about their experience. I mean, that's just part of being on a school board. I mean, so everyone's like, well, this is what happened when I was a student, or this is how my experience was. And so people already start with their preconceived assumptions of what school looks like or what their experience was. Or, Exactly. So the important things like the connection we have yeah, with the actual yeah. students and the impact that people now not so much our own experience. So like being able to have that a lot. Like for me, a lot comes from my own experience, but not necessarily for mom. But yeah, it's like my connection to so much, like, the students that problem. inform you know, you the way my experiences can. Uh, influence that too, right? Like, mm -hmm. I remember, um, like, two sitting minutes. with some of the I'll, BIPOC I'll students two years ago, the, and inverse to the question you asked. with RJ, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, Edmonton cow, was like, was like, that assumption that the Edmonton was I lived this 20 years ago, like, the same yeah, exact thing, and Sarika, so who was the other RJ advisor, was like, um, as if time had a move, and I was like, yeah. we I don't all come from specific. different states, like, that's white schools, and yeah. it's just like the yeah. same exact experience. It was uh, very illuminating. Uh, I was like, oh, wow. Not just me. <laughs> Can we make a note about the assuming no news is good news? Yeah. I don't know. That's just. Um, and that might not have been the case with this particular process because we were getting feedback. Although Jim, as Chair said before that feedback, it wasn't really on the board. Right. 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 Gotcha. Committee was then able to kind of provide some guidance and insight to them, which made their presentation better for the board as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I would welcome that happening so that, like, you know, that the work happening on the committee level is doing their homework for the broader board so that every individual board member doesn't feel like I have to know everything about this, I have to do my homework on every single, I mean, it's a lot. Right. So, yeah. One more minute. Oh, wait, it sounds like Andrea's hair went back to your eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, I'm taking advantage of this. I'm taking advantage of this. Can't stop talking. <laughs> yeah. One thing I know about this board is that you do love to talk. You do. I say with all the love in my heart. All right, so <laughs> three minutes. Three minutes just to go over what you just talked about, and then we're going to change gears just slightly. Um, well, Kristen posed a very good question to so us, which is like, a, how did these the assumptions added, maybe create um, gaps for us in the process? And what, one that I admitted to was that yeah. the, the assumption that those with input will move forward, I think, left a lot of gaps in what we were hearing um, and how we were using feedback or what feedback we were using. Um, and then um, we also talked about how really the assumption that our admin team has a good grasp and is the you know we have faith in their ability to deliver is doesn't necessarily create a gap exactly but that we could do more to use that resource um, as a board when it comes to making important decisions like this one and that might look like so how did you how did you come to that how did you come to this to these options or how did you like that that's us asking Libby or um, Andrew or anyone. So why was this? Why did this originally come up, and how did you get to where you are with what you brought to us today, or something like that? Okay, one minute. Can't really remember that. Yeah, the mission was in this. It's also silly to talk about everyone's gone through something. So we all have our own experience. So there's assumptions we make about 
other people having the same one or biases we bring that mm -hmm. assume that everybody has the same mm -hmm. perspective. Okay. Put a, Everyone's an expert. This is what we're going to do now. We're going to synthesize kind of these conversations. So we're thinking about when the board needs to make very big decisions and the processes that go on with that, right? So we just dug in deeply the two processes that this board has gone through, or most of the this board has gone through. We're going to synthesize that. So what I want you to do for the next five minutes is to write independently, take notes independently from your thoughts around what do we really want to keep true to or try to, recognizing that not every process is the same and not every process can be the same, exact same and that there's some gray areas here. Um, what were the things that you just talked about or you feel are things that you want this board to really hold true to when the next big process comes about? for the board. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do individual think time, then we're gonna do some partner talk, and then we're gonna do whole community talk, okay? So five minutes of individual think time. That's to committee that had been collaborating uh, on behalf of the board of um, Taking the time to actually get data and testimony that, like, rather than just dive on ourselves and bringing that information. And then um, sort of establishing goals and priorities and checking in to know when we have things coming up that each individual board member doesn't feel like they have to learn it from the ground up. Like, you know, context at it, which is like, can you out of the way to speak up and know that was a downfall when it came time to know that it's Maybe that's just a little bit of Maybe that's something that needs to know. About a year is represented intentionally. Like, you know what I mean? Like more, more better attended to uh, the as a, as an individual board member taking responsibility for getting answers so they're not using board meeting time to try to figure, understand like, right. um, these details. Okay, let's come back together. Finish that thought. I'm just like making sure that's cool. Try to engage more with their questions. Okay, so uh, I have uh, tried. Paper up here. I'm going to have my back to somebody, so I apologize. Um, and I have lost my second grade teacher handwriting, so um, bear with me on that. But what are the main themes the board would like to encourage when offered the opportunity to develop a decision making process in the future? So, again, this is kind of popcorn. If no one's talking, it's your turn to talk. I, we have, I have about 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, set out for this depending on how long the conversation goes. So if it starts to slow down, then we will put a pin in it. But um, we do have some time. So you just had some independent time and you had some partnership time. So what kind of things did you talk about that we want to hold true to? Keeping in mind also the processes and decision making and such things in schools and school boards is sometimes gray. Um, so gray, gray, did you say? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Meaning it's not the same. You can't have the same process every single time. Right. It's not going to. Yeah. Yep. Um, what kind of things did you talk about? I mean, I would just share kind of where Sage and I landed. Um, you yeah, know, transparency and community involvement and processes that promote both. Um, also, receiving, I think, the appropriate level of information to sort of you know, see where the district's at, how it got there, and where it's going. Uh, Constantly challenging our assumptions. Hold on, Jim. Constantly challenging no, us. Uh, community input involvement. Um, it's very, uh, it was about the getting the information. Yeah. What did you say though? You said the appropriate uh, amount. The appropriate amount of information so we can kind of see at a high level where the district is, why it's there, and where it's heading. Um, challenge assumptions. Okay, Jim, I'm gonna stop you. Okay, you else stop. In. Um, something that I'm kind of connecting with the community involvement. When we're consulting the community with these decisions, making sure that we're doing so in like a thorough and and in diverse ways, I would say. So keep talking. What do you mean by thorough? So like making sure that when we're reaching out to the community, we're getting a lot of feedback on big decisions. Particularly, but also 
that we're giving many different outlets for the community to provide their feedback. So we get that diversity of voices, and we also get probably much more voices than we would from just one source. My, um, my, mine's pretty specific, but the, um, I think it uh, can be scoped out to apply to a learning from both processes, which is adjusting agendas when necessary to make the space to be able to have the discussion or research or whatever in order to do, um, be able to make a good decision. Another one that feels like really important to hold true to is to center the student perspective when making a decision. Zach and I talked about um, <clears throat> like deep community level work and that, uh, or sorry, committee level work and that um, committees are collaborating more with administration and kind of doing, you know, the deeper homework on specific topics and then sharing back to the board at large such that, you know, every single individual board member isn't researching each topic, you know, until midnight the night before, but that the committees are really doing that deep level work and sharing back with the board at large. sort of like in that same vein of like working with communities um, we talked about for more like contentious issues or like politically like specifically like the SRO um, getting that community engagement and involvement whether that's through like committees or like surveys um, in terms of like like getting perspective unique perspective and input in a way that's not like public comment. And public comment would be one, right? Yeah. But not the only. Not the only. Yeah. So we had a, we had affinity groups. We had affinity groups, sorry. You know, one on one combos. Sorry. Yeah, and surveys up there. So um, context for the issue, so, um, and I think I mean this a little differently than maybe some of the pieces above, but what role, if any, does the board actually play? What decision does the board actually have to make? Where does it fit in our priorities or our timeline or spending? So these two things are two really good examples of like the board has a different role in the track versus the SRO conversation. Um, you know, is our role to write make recommendation to the administration? Is our role to provide the space for the community? Is our role to make a tough decision? Like, what's what our role is and is not? Sorry, I have problems. So you can I can only see far without glasses. And, yeah. <laughs> We gotta make just sure some big room. There's no rule that you have to stay in your one spot. You probably can't read it anyway, so this <laughs> I would add uh, following through. Mm. Follow through. Yeah, they were like, what's next and what is our role and how do we follow that through? Mm. Um. I, I've, there have been a lot of situations where people have written questions regarding the materials ahead of the meeting because I think there's always stuff that we don't understand and it would be nice if we found ways to kind of get a little bit more of an understanding ahead of time so that the board meeting can be more about the how, how do we come to this, why are these the, why are these options instead of, I don't know how to explain that, but um, a lot of conversation is just me trying to understand what I'm looking at. And if I could figure out how to understand it a little better outside of the board meeting, there could be more conversation about how, why this is in front of us, how we got here, and why 
these options are the most appropriate options based on what we know right now. Does anybody want to talk back to that? Well, the f a thought that came up for me as you were talking about was like, I'm not sure we have to put the pressure on ourselves to make sure we're making a decision in any board meeting. Like to me, the lesson there is, let's just make sure there's enough time in the process for us to fully understand. And that it doesn't have to be like, I have to understand it before 6.30 p.m. on a Wednesday. So maybe I can take the time during the board meeting to understand it and, and then ask, if there's a decision to be made, can we make it another time and not have to put the pressure on ourselves to do it? Because I, I, I think there is an open meeting loss too. We can have like questions and answers via email without that are going to impact. Yeah, so I don't know how to do it. Uh, that's one of the things. I know people have asked questions ahead of time and that has informed the way the presentation has come out. Maybe that's kind of what I'm talking about is, is, is trying to hold ourselves accountable to sort of um, make sure that um, yeah yeah we can't do it as a board you can you can get more information from I mean, like for instance you could ask clarifying questions of you know Grant or now Christina about the budget like boy I really don't understand these numbers and send uh, yeah send them you know five or six questions about well, what is this uh, that's not involving the whole board, but then you can come and say, yeah. Like, and you're welcome to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with other board members, yeah. too, but it's just about not trying to use those conversations to develop consensus yeah. prior to a board meeting. So it's like, if you just are trying to ask questions or gain perspective, but it's not about like, hey, we're going tonight. Will you vote with me? <laughs> right? <laughs> I think I, the reason why I said anybody want to talk back to that because, because uh, when you ask me questions before presentations, that's incredibly helpful, yeah. right? You, I don't answer you right away because I'll answer it in the board meeting. Yep. And if I don't, I expect you to ask me again, right? So uh, getting those questions beforehand. And then the other thing I'd say too is if you all who have a much stronger idea of what's happening because you're with me two times a month, right? If not more during the month, don't understand where we're going or don't understand something, probably people in the community don't either, right? right? And so so that's always good to have those conversations. So I heard two things, ask questions of Edmund beforehand or maybe other board members as well. Um, and then the second thing I heard too that Mia added on was, don't feel the pressure to vote if you're not, you know, like you can always push back a vote, right? And you can always vote something down because you know, like you can do all those things are well in your power. So, so, um, Push back about if you need more time. <clears throat> and just that relates to to me as you know, flexible agendas, just being flexible to be like, you know what, we need more time on this. Mm. Uh, requesting and using relevant data and decision making. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> better intake of community public comment like you know when people come to share their heart stories to have the way that we uphold their stories and say we hear you now we're gonna move on I don't know like that what that it's like a, a little bit better communication I guess are you talking about specifically during board meetings? Among yeah. Or are there other times? Yeah, yeah. The, the process, like, we're going to hear from impacted communities about an issue and see that we don't kind of just brush through, but that we, what's the word? Like, an acknowledgement. Acknowledging. Thank uh -huh. you. That's and Libby, is, this is, like, what we're holding on to as positives from these processes that we can, like, move forward to other processes. Is there another step here that's, like, what can... What are we going to actively work to improve? I think one of the things that I've heard members of this board say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is kind of like a board handbook almost. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is an excellent thing 
what I would type it up. So I, since I can read my chicken scratch and not many people can. Not that bad. Um, <laughs> my husband hates my grocery list. We'll put it that way. Um, the, uh, uh, I could type it up as like part of the potential board handbook that could be made uh, that we've talked about and yeah, that we've, we've all talked about. Uh, that's where I see this going. And so when I think also when we have conversations like this and big decisions come up. So for instance, right, when school gets started, the board is gonna to wanna to get into community discussions around budget, right? Typically what happens is in November, it's like, an, oh crap, we gotta get community input around the budget because the administration is presenting at the first board meeting in December, right? So um, it might be that you wanna be thinking about, you know, you might wanna say, hey Libby, um, you know, October 1st board meeting or September, whatever the second board meeting is in September, can we have the agenda time represent designing a process for the board meeting? We've just had this conversation and we can use that mm -hmm. to move forward, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess my question is like, can we discuss right here on this piece of paper things that we really need to improve and not holding up things that we already do well? Okay. <clears throat> So yeah, I want I yeah I just want better organization around big decisions. Like so, identifying a timeline in advance, um, so that we know like here are the big yeah. exactly what you said about the budget. It's a good example. It's yeah. sort of like the budget decision, and I think we did a fairly good job of that this year. But we can always improve. It's sort of like here's the timeline of this decision, just so that everybody on the board understands. When, you know, yeah, so that, and I can take ownership of that, right? Because I might have it in my head, but not have shared it. Yeah. So that we can build in the time to do all of this stuff because community input, especially thorough and diverse community input, <laughs> takes time and it's like slow democracy. So, um, knowing in advance, or and you and we're, I, Jim and Libby have improved on that with the, uh, the sort of future agenda yep. spreadsheet that you've created. So we can We've look always at had that. We just never shared it. <laughs> that they shared. Transparency. Yeah. So like, yeah. it's really helpful for all of us to see like what's going to be coming up on future agendas. So because you two might know like this big decisions being made in November, you know, but we may not have that same timeline. Right. Right. Same. And I agree. And I'm wondering if that future agenda is an, is is enough, or if there's if it's worthwhile to have five minutes at the close of every board meeting to say up and coming. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So up and coming. These are these are some these are some questions that we're going to have to be tackling. So and that was sort of to Merrick's point, which was like you know not a report out, but just sort of like a highlight reel of the future agendas. Because mm -hmm. that allows be for a lot more effective community conversations when you're sort of like these are some of the things that are thoughts. What do you think? I don't mm -hmm. know. pretty good list up here and we don't have to stop because we're at the end of a chart paper I have more <laughs> so we can continue on the whole wall is it I know exactly <laughs> this was my one executive decision that I made yeah. um, I don't balls that I can write on and then I use chart paper um, <laughs> so I can say that. everybody good with this all right I think oh go ahead just, sorry one is balancing the priorities in a way that is like so like a timeline like there are while really maintaining that community. So there are concerns within the community and that we can say, okay, we need to balance these priorities for the next six months and this is how we're gonna do it. Just like have like really intentional thought process around that. More retreats. <laughs> okay, it is 10.07 right now. Why don't you all go, I believe it's beautiful outside, although we're in the cave right now. So why don't you all go and take a little walk or break until 10.25. Okay, 10.25. So um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna shift gears completely from process to uh, prioritizing priorities. Prioritizing priorities. <laughs> That's one way to put it, I guess. Um, <laughs> we're going to do some brainstorming around this, okay? So the first step in this process, so how we're going to do it again is individual reflection, partnership conversation, 
bigger partnerships conversation and that whole group conversation, okay, to make sure that all voices are in the room. Um, so what we're going to do first is for the next five minutes or so, as I see you scribbling furiously during those five minutes, what I want you to do is really take some individual reflection time to think about just four ideas, no more than four ideas, that the board, if you were king or queen of the world, that you would prioritize for the board for the 2022-2023 year. That could be extended, you know, it's not just for one year. It could be thought of as a multi-year thing. But, um, so if you were in charge of prioritizing the work of the board, it should take five minutes to write down what your top four would be. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. And you can, you have five minutes, so you can flush those out as much as five minutes allows. Okay, we're gonna do a little white wheel brainstorming. Okay, so Jim, I'm gonna have you move your chair into the circle, looking out. <coughs> Merrick, I'm gonna just have you turn your chair, okay? So you're on the outside of the circle. Oh. All right, Jill, come sit right here. Amanda, come sit right here, please. Zach, come sit over here, please. Chris, you can sit right there. Okay, come on over here. Sage, do you want to come over here to Jill? Emma, come over here. And Mia, once Jim moves, you're going to be Jim's partner over here. Okay? <laughs> you're going to look at the center boss. You want me to look at Abby? Huh? Yep. Oh, oh. No, turn out, turn out this way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Three circles. Yes. Right. And then Mia's going to be here. You guys can slide a little bit that way, just so Mia has a little bit more room. Okay, okay. So there you go. Are, are we talking? Yeah. Hold on a second. All right, so this is wagon wheel brainstorming. We're set up in a quasi wagon wheel at the moment. You're looking at your partner. Exactly. Okay. Uh, this this is how this is going to go. The internal chair is going to go first. Okay. So my friends in the middle. Zach, you're in the middle there. And your job is to tell about one priority you have. Just one. Don't go into others because you're going to share others with other people. Okay? The internal chairperson has four minutes to share their just one. That's a long time to talk. So you have to really push yourself, which is why, say you if I will, Renee, I gave you some oh. possible questions to use if you need them to ask your partner more questions. These are this is not an end be all list by any means, but it's just a way to get people thinking um, if you need help with that kind of thing. Okay? Um, so, four minutes. At the end of four minutes, I'm going to stop you. And like I said before, I know this board loves to talk, right? I'm going to stop you, and then the outside chair is going to share their idea. Should be the same, might be different, right? And the inside chair is going to ask questions. Then we're going to move chairs, okay? And you're going to share another idea. So it's four minutes to share and have questions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody ready to go? Everybody clear what you're going to do? Hands up, middle chairs, if you know which one you're going to share. Jim, you know which one you're going to share? Yep. OK. Ready? <laughs> Go. Four minutes. OK. Um, how would you go about determining the disparities? Or what as a board member would you need to have access to to determine disparities or go about determining disparities? Data? How? Uh, data that is what is the effort versus impact ratio or what would be um, a goal for effort versus impact ratio 
short term that line. So, so like, like is yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what would you like like so I guess was, what would you expect the yield of the outcomes to be based on the output? Would it be significant and is significance numbers? Or is significance the improvement of what you know the closing of the gap? Right. I guess like if maybe that's how would you evaluate success? Success is that I see success as we put the amount of resources we're going to put to that for the kids that are affected now. Um, and, and then also the progression to like think there's specific things to do now, right? Uh, so so there's progress how would uh, the administration show growth in this goal? What would you be looking for to say, like, yes, the administration is going to say this? I think they would show us actual well, the, the question about the administration, the administration can show the growth by just showing us the resources that are being used and how uh, they like, pass the practices. Yep. And then also uh, the evidence will be by family sharing and their experience and also the evidence long term. Starting like three years now. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because that was in the classrooms um, with our students on a daily basis. And so, like, my excellence, we have to show the awesomeness and, you know, of those people in those roles is essential to, like, outcomes here within this district. So, um, you know, I want to make sure, like, um, we're paying people out of that, that we're giving them more you know, professional development that reflects all their needs are, that reflects, like, the broader vision of the district. Um, I want to be certain that we are having as cool and BIPOC educators and that um, we're, you know, we talked about this other retention piece. That's one thing to hire them and check that box and also pause ourselves, but you're not going to be able to actually keep these folks in the fill in the fall and not get feel welcoming and belonging and feel like they can introduce that for them and their perspectives. And I'll just like push it like this. Yeah. How do you imagine the process like? Um, so I don't want to work on the problem. Yeah, I mean, I think it's all about the board being able to understand, but you know, to what extent, um, I don't know that the board can impact, you know, whether we're providing funding, you know, for the administration to recruit in non traditional ways or from non traditional sources, you know, and that we're putting the emphasis on recruiting, um, you know, from, from BIPOC communities. Um, and, and then also just sort of, you know, that, that follow up piece that we're supporting professional development, that we're supporting like kind of community building among educators in our district and that kind of collaborative piece. You know, and that we're really looking at, we're supporting and looking at the data, right? That supports like, you know, why do teachers leave like, jobs? That's actually a small reason they that teachers oftentimes don't leave jobs because of pay. They leave jobs because of environment, because they don't feel like they can meaningfully collaborate with their, you know, with their colleagues, um, that they don't feel aligned with their colleagues, okay, that they don't feel like there's a clear outside person. Blah, 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 but we all see Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? All right. Woo. This time, the outside person How are you? is going to go first with a right. different priority that you listed. So not the same. Think of it. Use a different priority that you listed to talk about for this four minutes. Have a go now. Outside okay. person. Okay. Different. Hey. So and so I around data main establishing consistent community engagement and collaboration practices to, to support informed like decisions, d discussion and decision making, um, inclusive of reporting back. Global understanding. So, so, so that's a goal I would like for us to set is to like to get that foundation. In place. How do you imagine that I think we would. So be, I think we should just get started. You know, we've gotten, we've, we've had started it in sort of like bits and starts, and I think it'll take us getting like establishing what the schedule for some time that we're looking for. Thinking of getting very, um, we're pretty clear on who we should, who we really ought to be talking to. We just don't, in a consistent way, come back, like, so have that be like a real conversation. So it's like schedule, time commitment. Um, and making sure that we're also not asking for and, um, yeah, like, yeah. like I haven't been fully thought like through, like, like, what does that mean for what value data people outside of the board are experiencing? But I think there's some, like, piece of that, like, we have to think that through. Maybe not necessarily before we get started, but certainly while we're doing it. I think there needs to be some checkpoints along the way to say, how are we doing at this? And how sustainable does it feel? What are the adjustments we have to make? I think those are all pieces of the process. I, uh, and it would be like a very collaborative committee. Yeah. It, oh, and another piece of the process is we have to figure out how do we, um, what do we do with the information once we have it? Like how do we make it useful? Um, so that it's not just like um, in random places that we have to like almost like take initiative on our own as individuals to go find it. So what's the. Um, just like I don't know if we call it a database necessarily, but what's, what's holding all of this so that we can go to it on a fairly regular, easy basis? Um, 
Um, so I think that, I think that the SBA training around what like, those school boards do with data is just like an overall, like this is, these are the opportunities. I feel like it would impact everyone in the district, and it's going to impact board members, and that it would be a lot of our time. It would impact, ultimately, if we, once we get to the point of doing it well, it will but what do you want have, and result in us making, in my opinion, better so decisions so on that impact on our students and our teachers and our, and teachers and our staff? Some like um, baseline mapping, you know, uh, work hopefully in good ways. Is it more than is this their role of the board, you think? Yes, community engagement and stuff, but I think it really makes the board. And what, how would the administration? I don't think it's up to the administration to show the evidence of it or show the growth, but it's a good question on that. What evidence? I yeah, I that feels amorphous to me right now. Like I think that I would need to think a little bit more to figure out. Like well, then what? Okay. How do we know we're doing it well? Inside person, share your next priority. New priority inside person. I apologize if I just got oh, you off. <laughs> right. That's You're an insider. I'm an insider. Ooh, a different one, huh? Uh, I think that holistically looking at, at the way in which discipline intersects with blind harassment and like instruction. Holistically looking at the way that discipline Okay, so the goal is to dig into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that we can create this policy. Ultimately resulting in. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. So what's the effort versus impact ratio? Yes. How much? How? I think my interpretation of that question is like. Like, What's your um, how much effort do we need to put in to get the impact that we're looking for? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think medium. Uh -huh. I think we need to look at current policies, current data that we have, and uh, the versus the impact ratio, like versus the resources. Yeah. Priority. Like, uh, difference with versus what we want. The impact will be a well rounded community that understands how all this is affected. Yeah. So we definitely have. Would be uh, huge. Yeah, big, big difference from where we are right now. Yeah. But that I, I cannot be doing Yeah. What's the role of the board in this course? I think um, it is our role because we need to better. We need to look at our policy decisions in response to the projects we have not only in school but like So I think it is our role to ensure that we are going in the right direction. Uh -huh. Yeah. So our role is at the policy level, budget and budget resource allocation and uh, at the policy level what we would be asking is the policies as they're written right now do they still serve us for creating the climate the educational climate that we need in order to serve our students yeah yeah what kind of process what do you imagine the process would be to accomplish this goal uh, you know i would see that uh, policy maybe looking at the policies that are uh, the equity 
pretty close to me. They come and we built some stuff and we figured out a bunch of things like we're building and facilities and how and the equity policy is just like looking at how the community lines up and lines up with all of that. And so looking at the budget for our community, looking at what are the businesses that are like, how are we, how is the budget currently tackling the very specific buckets and um, the administration even has an idea and how we need to build that to make those like aspects like in the clear areas like what's happening in the city. Okay, let's finish that one up. Outside chairs, move one to your right. Awesome. Yeah. Take a new so priority here to discuss that you have not discussed yet. <laughs> Thank you for taking our question. Two thousand steps. Bigger than longer than my Oh yeah. Inside chair to share first. Yeah. All right, great. Inside chair. Inside chair. You weren't even a traveler. I know. Hello. Okay. How are you? You're going first. Yeah, you're going first. Okay. So you go first. I go first. Okay. One more. I think it was. Two more words. Um. I think oh, I gave my best one, so it's just establishing uh, a consistency long range for the board so that um, um, regardless of the of the board, who is in the administration, the district is going so it's almost like just establishing processes in general. I think yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That way it's, it's less tied to one person and one position in their process, and it's just it's more procedural and structure. Or if you, you decide you know, when the lottery and you leave, so to come in and take over from where you were. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, uh, how would we do that? Yeah. As a committee, yeah. like a process committee, or as a board in general? Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a kind of like holistically all of like there's a process in which each committee is developed. Like this is here's my layer. Here are the things that we can do. Like here's how democratic process is built in it, regardless of your. Um, Yeah, that um, knowing that so I wonder would that be a process change for uh, from the minute what creating the like, chapter and not not to not, not to be punitive but just to make a habit. So yeah, it's supposed to happen. So what kind of process do you think it take to do what block do you how do we adjust going forward? Yeah, and for example it could be um, a lot of times like we say we're gonna do this but then it's not in the minute so we don't have it yet so it's like oh this is something that's not like that I've been one I was like oh god I said I would like to do that like I just work out what it is and I'm like what am I doing I'm just going to do that 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 um, yeah, I think, I think like if you keep consistency of 
So one of my priorities was strengthening the bond with the community. Uh, I think it's just through yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> through the yeah. through traditional methods, like you speaking to people, um, like youth, I, 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 people doing that, and, and really, I, mean, so I feel like most people are like most people are doing that. But I don't see it all. Keeping, uh, keeping, uh, uh, keeping a focus on that, and maybe not making it compulsory, but trying to trying to formalize it a little bit, like saying like you know it's an expectation that you do. One private listening session and that's what I've done for two years. You know what I'm going to do with that session. And also exploring new ways to talk to people. Because I think you know, it's, you have to do the traditional methods of you know, the bridge or front porch. You have to do that. But we get to social media. I was thinking during this, like, you know, why don't we do like a spelling bee? Like, not really a spelling bee. Sponsored by the school board. Have some prizes. You know, people like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like events like that, trying, 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 trying to, to this is still a ton of work. Yeah. How is it? What policies are you using? I mean, is it quite a benefit, or it is a little bit because it's an event? Because people are getting it. Because that's one thing I'm really more than one doing resonance. What's in What's in it for me? Sorry, what am I getting from this? And so, well, you're getting an educated community, you're getting smart citizens, but also something like that where it's an event like maybe you know. Either to the senior center. Like, you know, the schools already do that, but maybe you know, you know, I think more. So encouraging the ball back from using that college school is that pushing each other away. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, I think, uh, I think we have an easy business in a small community. You know, imagine how it's like huge metro. That's when you really need the rubber to lift the ones that you want. Exactly. What is the effort versus that we want to reach? I feel like it's a great shining policy that just needs a moment to be the best. It's something that I think we're like, like, is like an investment oh, here. Oh, that at first, like, feel right. maybe it might you know, feel negligible, and, and it might be discouraging, but I feel like you have to keep doing it. So I feel like it, it, it'll, it'll yeah. snowball. But I feel like the impact, I personally feel like even if you speak to only a couple of people, it's still worth it because often, sometimes it might get better because I'm able to connect or get deep into the issues with the person. Whereas if it was a, a big room of people trying to talk to you, you have a little bit of time with each person. Um, so, so, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a impact. Um, I mean, I feel like it's a lot of fun. Some people might feel like it's a lot of fun. Because of schedule, because of personality, whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's part of the job. And that policy is like, what, it's 43 years old now? And so, we've done any of that policy. Yeah. But it's just kind of And this is the role, the, the role of the board, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. And there's also a question there about like. And then would this be the administration yeah. should work in this school? Honestly, I think it would be. But well, would evidence would be. It's sort of like it's, it's a very okay. hard thing to quantify. Outside group, say thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. 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 just would be like the final. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the outside group oh, start oh, first. Oh, oh, your last oh, priority oh, that you know you take a note to the last priority. Uh, last priority. Yeah, take this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, my last priority is, is but I uh, uh, transparency that, and community awesome. input. Um, and I was raving about you being the impetus for the listening sessions. And I feel like you pushing for that and making it come to fruition and sort of getting everybody on board and assigning people out to things and making spreadsheets. And um, I, even though it's still a work in progress, it's like just having those listening sessions as part of the culture of the board 
has a huge improvement on community input and making that part of our like best practices. So thank you for doing that. Um, it's improved our work greatly, but I still feel like we have a lot of work to do on it and we can improve, we can take what you started and like run with it and improve it. Um, and be more mindful of like making sure that those listening session, sessions inform the work that we're doing um, in a timely way. How do you imagine that process? If, well, like if we know that we have a decision coming up, um, so if we're if we're a little more mindful about organizing around our major decisions that are going to be made, or making a calendar, or, um, looking at the future agendas, then creating uh, listening sessions that are targeted towards those topics, so that it's like let's say it was let's say we could reverse the clock and talk about the track. Um, and we did a lot. We did listening sessions around Esther, but it just wasn't specifically like. Do you think that if we have one and a half million dollars, that we should spend it on a track? It just wasn't ever posed quite that way. And I feel like in the future, if there was something like that to come up, I feel like it should be posed exactly that way. Like on this date, we are going to vote. You know, it's two months out. We have plenty of time. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And to ask our variety of uh, affinity spaces and listening sessions about that. Um, I mean, the budget is a big one. So, like, usually on the budget, you can see some themes where you're like, okay, we're investing more heavily in this, you know, or we've actually cut this. And how do you feel about that? Um, and getting community feedback. Like, one thing that yeah, it might be like one thing that I want. It's it's like a kind of smaller example, but like something that sort of just like happened sort of unceremoniously was removing uh, family consumer sciences um, at the middle school and in, and putting into its place sustainability. And I mean, we did have the, uh, a group of students come and present to us with with Don Taylor, so we did kind of know like oh, there's this sustainability thing coming down the road. That would be great to have some listening sessions around and community input on. Oh, I have to. It's your turn now. <laughs> you saved your last one for me. Yeah. Um, I I said applying equity and net zero considerations in basically all the decisions that we're looking to see are what are the equity lens and the zero lens. Like okay, and all of those that are coming up that just happens to be directly back. Yeah, um, having that plus. Do you think the visioning work could help us with that? Like, I think it's for everything. I think like we have the equity policy tool that comes with the U.S. as a language. Like, what just question about like as a as a that and we have like we also have the language like just asking those questions that give us like a broad stroke and I think it should be like a goal to have that like on the top <laughs> of the board. So like it's just basically not his own thing. Yeah. But it's the big picture. Well, I like I, I just like something kind of clicked with me when you said it the way that you said it about the lens. Um, it's almost like at this retreat or whatever we could choose a couple of lenses to be our like chosen lenses for the year or for the semester or something mm -hmm. and then it's like at the end of every conversation we can make sure if we haven't already to like go back and be like okay so what about the net zero lens on this question or what about the DEI lens on this question and that it would sort of live separately from our like goals you know like it's like if the goal is to improve restorative practices or the goal is to improve curriculum or policies um, policy revision 
whatever. It's like you're taking the time. Yeah, taking the time to like use that lens. So I think it could be interesting. And and I sort of see the vision. That's why I asked that question. Is I sort of see the vision work. I'm hoping to provide us with some lenses where it's like, you know, here's the values of the community, and that we would always sort of like revisit that with every big decision to be made and like go through with the visioning lens. You know, and I, so I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> that DEI will be part of that lens from the visioning community. I'm not positive that net zero will be. But maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think the net zero is like all the environmental Yeah. But like but at least you have it in consideration that yeah. this is yeah. kind of um, yeah. like dealers yeah. or like have a zero presentation yeah. 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 so um, you just heard from colleagues and you have your own so perhaps your thinking has shifted a little bit um, so there might be priorities that you put down originally that you're like nah um, that's not fleshed out enough or that's a training that's not a that's not a goal area maybe you know if you start to de differentiate between those to those ideas. Um, so I'm gonna give you five more five more minutes for individual reflection. You could have been like, man, I heard Jill say this and I agreed with her. So I'm gonna, that's one of my priorities now. Um, just where is your thinking changed? What's, and if you, if you haven't changed anything, if you have the same four, then take the five minutes to flesh it out. Like what might the process look like? Who would be involved in that? What would be the end goal for it? Um, flesh it out a little bit more. So you have five minutes. Um, I'll show, tell you where we're going. Then we're going to get in groups of three up on our whiteboard up here and just list all the priorities that we heard or that we still have. And then we're going to come together to start to kind of face those off because you can't do everything, right? So we want to narrow that down to like three, maybe four priority priorities. Okay, that's the kind of goal at the end of this session. Does that make sense of where we're going? Okay, so take five minutes, you can stay where you are, you can go back to your seat, either one works for me. Five minutes of reflection again on where you're thinking now for full, full, full priorities. Okay, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna get in three groups of three. One of our groups is gonna have four. Um, you're gonna work up at the board and you're gonna list all the ideas. None of these ideas should be fleshed out. The goal is to get as many as quantity, it's not quality right now. Okay, so you've heard a lot of ideas, you have a lot of ideas. Um, so the goal would be quantity of ideas up on the board. Uh, and you can feel free to ask questions, particularly like what's the board's role in that, you know, to, to prioritize it that way. Um, or maybe is that something we can get evidence on or not? Like, or how would you measure the process? But really, don't get stuck going down a rabbit hole of developing one of these priorities because that's not the group's responsibility. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to count off by threes. Merrick, you're one. Two. Count. One, two. Jim, you're three. One. Three. Two. Three. Four. You're a one. All right. So one's over here on this board, this side of the board. Twos are in the middle. And threes are down here. Come to you. Okay. Quantity, not quality. Necessarily. <laughs> one's down there. Twos are in the middle. Three's down here. All up there. Oh. Get them all up there. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Taking charge of the marker. Yes. Yeah. Pre. Oh, you've been over since. I don't want my name, but I was stepping to. Oh, yeah. 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 Ye
We're going to go 10 minutes and right. so see where we're at. Come on, Stop Create a home. Holistic process to look at the intersection of discipline, bullying, harassment, and harassment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Following through on sorry, well, we'll on discussions and concerns we hear from the community. Uh, at the intersection. intersection. Well, don't want to steal any more minutes. Um, data. I'm going to flesh out of that is figuring out what information and data we need to be able to make the decisions and make them in a process for access. So what we need to process to access. And then engage and inform community more in our decision making process. Is that different from strength? Yeah, yes. Engage and yeah. inform? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted uh, student outcomes to focus on how we're channeling our energy towards improving student outcomes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have um, this is taking a step further, but I don't know see like that mm -hmm. connected to that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's almost like an actual training that's that is that to that. Um I have a question for you. Yeah. Um I have a question for you. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's something we just have that PowerPoint. Our um uh add. I had an extremely broad um, goal, which was safety and wellness for school students and staff. So it's like very, very broad, but I feel like it encompasses everything from like school, um, like facilities, crisis plans to, um, you know, our easing and bullying policy and how well it's being implemented. That's going to be a topic at the next school I just outed myself and I haven't done that yet. What's that? Oh, that's going to be public comment. Oh, really? No. Great. It's on the Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, great. On the student and kind of which level? Yeah. 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 Y
And I would say he's just uh, uh, so he's what an amateur handwriting analyst. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So he went in early but but it's it's there instead of like in like hammer cards. Even, yeah. 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 Even yeah. Really I think about that like, too, just in terms of like a wellness. You know, yeah. She's disorganized. Like, yeah. Isn't well, that like yeah. judging me? Feel welcomed and affirmed and the opportunity to like to express themselves and have a lot of opportunities to do so. Right. Sure, the budget is right? Where they take jobs like schools, like this yes. year's a code, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, you can pay in, but it's not very affordable, right? However, they are. Those conditions might be better. Something I just found out was like, yeah, it's that funny. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of these, like, sure I have written as bullet points under some of these reports. So, it's like community and code responsiveness. Okay. The point of that is equity. Yeah, you know what I mean? That so it's like yeah. sort of not something that and this like I have um, keeping that. vision as a lens for all work and decisions. Like, I have under my leaving. sort of community and code responsiveness. And anyway, so yes, like how we're doing with creating equitable education within our district. So I think we're gonna tell it's cool that story. I think it's okay. Um, begin the process of moving the district towards a net zero policy. Did you say it was policy? Yeah. 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 Which is this? But I also the second thing is advance a more equitable and inclusive curriculum. Right, because a lot of times when people come to us, it's And advance DEI competencies <laughs> district wide <laughs> and work to attract and retain more diverse hires and perspectives. So we've discovered that Mia is a vermonter. Mia is a typewriter, basically. <laughs> yeah. Do you have competencies? Yeah. You two, get every, you two groups get everything you heard to us there? You heard wow. this partnership? Yeah. We just need three more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good phrase. Have you heard something else that's what you said that we go up? Recruit and retain more diverse hires. Build off of this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I find this one. This one. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, right. I spent my time actually, as Libby said, like flush it out a little bit more. What what would it look like? So I don't have really anything to add to this list. I would just say. Do you want to reframe mine? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um. um no, I don't think I would change the language of them. Um, oh, I think, Amanda, because one of the things we talked about here is <laughs> resulting in. Um, uh, do you remember how we said that? No, mine is literally monitor. Right. I literally uh, sign things every year. Or like a safer right. yeah. educational like, environment. Yeah. So, yeah. Just Stakes are a little higher. Yeah. I can't do everything on my iPhone or paper. Yeah. Okay, here's your next step as a group. Your next step is to get it down to five. 
I think we can, we can, uh, um, two and three look like you'd be combined. I think the three, yeah, I believe so. Two is a bonus. Like the net zero has a great way to be working in response to our right? Yes. Then the amount of equity in the course of could it be in their line equity? But it's a pretty good one. Five. You know. Five. All parties work out. Is this um, yeah, I don't want to do all three. three. No, my, my number three. Number three. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense because it's this part of it, This part of it feels like something for us to hold on to as we. Yeah, it is. going on you know, this. Oh, yeah. So, for that's example, that's kind of, kind of what I started yeah. working on. Yeah. Was like, yeah. what would it look like yeah. to have this be? Yeah. What does it take yeah. to get real yeah. robust yeah. community input yeah. at the beginning of the process yeah. and on going throughout yeah. and yeah. using yeah. and how do we know when we're here and all of that stuff can be yeah. something yeah. that we so use yeah. this year to establish that we can do over and over again. Round, Would you like round, the number round, two to we borrow? Uh, yeah. I am yeah. focused specifically on lyrics. So we want to do this one. Listening to that. I don't think that's what it is. But we're trying this one. I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, you know, so an equity process. Right. Right. Which is kind of a Yes. Yes. When you feel like you have five, and student outcomes are not just, you know, academic. So I feel like I I guess the short answer I feel like the question outcomes is like the big right and like the equity is like a prominent bullet within that you know because I also think like you know even even our students that we don't have these predictive outcomes in school sort of based on which is like profiles. Like to, to get the data there's, there's always more that we can be doing for every single kid in the school. Oh, you know, and how we did to articulating that well, but this decision that we're making, and then how we follow the And then I guess you know, I like take it back a step. It's like you know, then it's like also determining you know what are the priority outcomes, right? You know, what are the categories? Like I think about there's academic outcomes, there's social emotional outcomes, there's like preparedness for life after school outcomes, you know, it's, um, I feel like what I hear from that one is like, you know, we have a set of values, you know, as a board and that we're using those values to direct our decisions. Um, so I guess I feel like I wonder if that really goes in terms of like community engagement, right? It's like, what are, what did we hear from the community in terms of their values? And are we ensuring that we're applying those, you know, in the decisions that we're making? Like I could value something, but my broader community may value something more. So my job as a school board member is to make sure that like the will of the community is, you know, injected into decision making. So I think that's like not so being represented in these slides. Let's start putting things after this. Sage, if you need to move those chairs, remember? Yeah. Yeah. And telling their stories. Yeah. Where else does DEI also see? Okay, one more minute to prioritize five. Seven is the expectation of value. I'll put it there. Yeah. Uh, like it can just be just be in gage. Uh-huh. And gage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Thirty more seconds. One minute. Two boys. Just trying to have our kids. Yeah. I think so. Like you say, um, we would look at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Hold that conversation for one second. Don't go anywhere, Jill. Let's see what you're doing here. <laughs> All right, here's your next step. Get it down to three. Here are some questions, please, as I listen to the conversations to help, hopefully. So when you look at your three that you're trying to do, I want you to ask, your, ask each other, is this a strategy, as in process, like what we just went and talked about, or is it an actual goal, or is it a training? So that might help. Another question that might help is, um, how would we know if this were going to be achieved? 
And if you don't know, then it may not be a good goal. It may be more of value. Um, and then the third question, as I listened to the conversations, was, is it possible to collect evidence or data, which is connected to that last one, okay? Um, because I like to have things that can be achieved as a superintendent. <laughs> so, or at least work can be shown to get there. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be so, but it may want to rock. Okay, so get down to three, no please. That's one thing that we can measure. And it is a tangible what goal was the range? What was the strategy? Yep. So the strategy, a goal, a training, or a value? This is more of a value, I think. So the strength of the mm -hmm. bond, engage, and form the It just may help whittle it down for I think staff recruitment and retention checks the boxes. Yeah. Um, when I see this as like a practice, like we develop goals and strategies because we value value. Going back and into it. Right. So, like, and I hear a lot about our. Which, uh, when I say that, I don't, I don't know how little they're all right. Data is something that we can't really measure. It's more of a means to an end. Yeah. Yeah. So, safety and wellness for the entire school community. It's hard to measure, but it's still a good goal. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think things like basic mental health now. Yeah, so I mean, number of like how many incidents of bullying and harassment, you know, right. were documented? And also, because the trend to increasing the increase. Access to food, access to courses, and I have curriculars that we've talked about. Yes. I bet we're not. Right. There are not a lot. I know. You broke the wall. Oh, man, Mia, you're that guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, we got. Mia's using a sharpie down there. Oh, God. Uh, Valley. I got it. Somebody, somebody, somebody did it. Somebody did it before. Okay. Um, there's also like. Uh, yeah, but not Oh, yeah. It's a regular thing. That was my problem. Yeah. We're efficient, guys. Yeah. 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 And that we aren't and watered and down the language. Did you see you that? Know, you are overachievers yeah. over here. I know. I'm just sitting here watching them struggle. All right, start to flesh it out. Did you see Stacey okay. Abrams' uh, campaign promise? No, making some Raise the minimum wage for all teachers in the state to 50 days. And this is the policy we choose to get there. Which, like, the best part when it comes to this. I mean, what I'm putting on my policies are, you know. And yeah, that's huge. How I many teachers are in Georgia? It's, it's about, well, that's that's huge for Georgia. Georgia. Ours aren't that far away from that. Yeah, so starting. Yeah, yeah, I think they are starting. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We're not that far away. Mm -hmm. Now, can but you do something about our important. cost of living, please? I know, right? I think we're wrong on that. Right, that ratio. Yeah. Really not. And then we need to start building houses. This way, it should not build houses. We need houses. So, it could be. See, I got that wrong. But I know what I meant. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah. So, we need to start push the push the agenda to like and then clarify district priorities about the curriculum and measurable data to get back to us. We've actually started thinking about what is your number one to be able to measure is that the gap or whatever between where we ought to be and where we are is smaller. Um, together packets of like Mm -hmm. I feel like what would you what would we pull out here of the thing that we would measure? I feel like I feel like some of those things fall under that. It's like the only like curriculum falls if we're talking about like social emotional health and boards role in ensuring students sex to have safety. I think there's a lot of yeah. I think it's like strategy and process of yeah. motivation yeah. and expectation yeah. of teachers. 
but like. But also just not being clustered in areas. I, mean, I don't know. I feel like it's similar to how we would address curriculum. It's how do we make. I don't know if this is the answer at all, <laughs> but how, like, how do we make here, an environment right, in which people are safe and is that done by like, your policy would be the goal, right? or yeah, the goal or is like, like, that's your policy? Right, right, yeah. The facilities committee might have a role because some of safety is just not physical. Right, right. Like all of the work that we do is sort of like can relate back to that, but it's hard for me to envision it as like a board goal because I'm not seeing this like sort of measurable. Uh, right. Data evidence, yeah. like in so there you know, know. Say, uh, it's a struggle is our for me. Yeah. I'm trying sense. to I'm trying to right. Right. clarify like, the role of the board in, in that. Like, not, like I think it's definitely a role of the district like, and should be right. a priority of all of the individual housing, schools you know, too. Park, like, don't I'm right. sure it exactly is, but it's sort of like so. How are how is the board holding the schools accountable to that and making sure to elevate it as a priority? I feel like then maybe because that makes sense I feel like then maybe I would lead more towards board expectations the goal is very big picture the goal ultimately is that our the students have a better in my mind have a better education because these things are in place that's why I think the board could be a so bad, but that's why I kind of had apply equity in the zero consideration because I see equity which includes the yeah, 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 and lands that can be applied to everything and anything, just like for the yeah, you know, like versus being it separate, yeah, so like rocks very you could apply equity to just sort of like the value piece of their literacy by asking. Or then kids that are from the who is getting bullied in your class. Like, you could get a price zero to not feel safe and not feel safe. So, that's why I think it's a good goal to ask. Like, move. Yeah. Yeah. Continue to move. Yeah. Right. Right. It's like our goal. Prioritizing these more outcomes. We're totally off. It's not very helpful. It's not very helpful. It's not very helpful. I think the goal is to advance like what's what like right yeah. 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 And, and then so it's a question of how do we know like smart how do we know we are making progress? But if you're not there, what are the experiences of the instead of So right. Right. So I think this is kind of like the goal. This is this is the goal. Is like yes. I don't want to use the word better, clear, but I think there's a little bit more specificity yeah. around Does this make sense? Like, does it want to be a vision kind of you know type like big overarching goal, or does it want to be like you know? Um, Can we just ninety percent stop you know retention over you know a ten year period? Do you know what I mean? Like how how measurable does it want to be? Um, I, I guess that's a way, at least that's a way to quantify the, the work we're doing, so, right? Right. This is by retention and higher, right. um, this number of open positions right. or whatever. So there is ways to measure that. Although we have yeah. said that do you so feel like this gets to a priority of creating a timeline for the for the year. If I were sort of like, I'm here, then we can sort of flesh that out and get the next step. Like, so the budget is not satisfied with that type of that's what we yeah. uh, that's what we want to so result in. Like we will look back and go further do we believe that this budget is actually addressing what they will Well in this case in this yeah. one we're particularly saying that we would say this is like what we're coming in. Like the budget process. Well, let's attempt to change the three minutes and then come back to the story to distill it further. Only one so far. No, it's, it's a painful task. Yeah. We kind of already narrowed it down like that first time. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I had just asked Libby um, about like, should these be SMART goals? It's, you know, we use it in education a lot. So yeah. it's an acronym for SMART is specific, M is measurable, A is achievable, R is relevant, T is time bound. Yeah. So like if we are really want to take that approach, you know, how we phrase it, yeah. Climate. I'm gonna say I, 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 I agree with you that those are our two main 
realms, I would be worried to put all of that into one goal. Like, I think that we should have a goal that just addresses the budget and then goal on it. I want to capture the links for this piece. Um, yeah. Reporting back. Right. So, inputs and well, outputs. I think we yeah. I think we would benefit from is that something? this. Almost like using these. I can change pieces, this. Just like no, you'd be using the budget as sort of like process almost like training ground for ourselves for getting us into a more, a more robust process for how we use an equity lens and maybe the net zero lens in our decision making. Um, that yes, is more about the process and strategy. It's kind it of to me this like thing a really about goal for us as a board to get this. where we're at. So I'm trying to get to, to just say, like, we, we hear you, here's what we've done. Instead, you know, I, I don't know. And then these are real concrete ways we can do that. We can say, all right, we have a process that's in place every single year. Let's look at that and apply some of the things we talked about this morning um, of both what we do well and what we All right, so two more minutes to get to, to, to the budget. With this in mind, with these pieces in mind. So because right now I, we don't apply that funds when we're going to budget, not not explicitly. It's the appropriate term of the state. Turn for students who are more attention. What was that? The, the, the proper wording for all students who need more attention. I would say more generalized needs. Robust community input like and high needs, at risk. My finger. Doing great, CG. Yeah. Or yeah, historically marginalized. Share out what your final three was. So let's have first number from number one, the priorities. Somebody close. share out. Close this okay. All right. Um, so close. for group one, our final three priorities were to create a district where students want to work and or teachers want to work and students want to attend. Our second goal was to stop the cycles slash foregone conclusions and focus on improving student outcomes for all students. And our third goal was ensuring that our schools are have safety, wellness, and include mental health and basic needs. Okay, right, middle, middle group? We struggled a little bit to distill, but we can't, in the end, we came up with um, sort of board expectations, clarify, clarifying board vision, goals, and timeline. Um, uh, to further formalize a process for community input and board accountability to that input. So reporting back out, um, progress monitoring, et cetera. Uh, establish um, priorities and progress monitoring of the curriculum issues that have been raised by students. Kind of relates to the DEI policy, which was another theme that came up for us in the first part of the process. Did you say the second one? Sorry, I missed you. Yeah. Yeah. I said all three, yeah. Okay, sorry. And the third group over here? Yeah, you were three. Uh, you were three. Sorry, then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was very hard. I don't know. I think what we're going to land on is that it's uh, a priority of the board would be to run a holistic process to look at the intersection of bullying, harassment, and restorative justice and discipline, resulting in a safer educational environment in our schools. 
Um, and then the, you know, skip a few and go to, with a robust community input, guiding the process, apply an equity and net zero lens to the budget, leveraging our funding to support advances in educational equity, closing the achievement gap, and saving the planet. I added that part right at the end because we were wrapping up. And then the very bottom one, advancing more DEI competencies and values district-wide to include recruiting and retaining more diverse hires and a more diverse curriculum. So just so that they stand out, I'll circle them. I think that's where pretty much we're doing. Okay, so for themes, we have, <clears throat> We have um, some DEI, right? So here's the piece. One, DEI in terms of recruitment. You all are going to have homework after this, so just FYI. In terms of recruitment, um, climate. I'm assuming that means teacher climate, staff climate, rather. Yes. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. So this is your work, not mine. I'm just trying to get the things up. Um, curricular decisions. I'm hesitating on that because I have a different definition of curriculum than it sounds like you do. So curricular work. And I'm gonna put a slash. This is my impact on here, so I can understand that. Instructional practices, because that I think is what we're actually talking about, not necessarily curriculum, but instructional practices and decisions. Uh, are we? I think it's both. I think curriculum are standards that are mandated by law. Practices. Is outcomes the same kind of now you're looking for for that list because we want to improve outcomes for students in the various anything else that i missed there from what people are saying i, I don't think you missed it i just have i'm yeah Want, looking for clarification. Jill, when you say outcomes, are you talking about something like the way we phrased it over there was closing the opportunity and achievement gap? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Another theme um, was a. Lily, can I just clarify the instructional practices piece? So. The curricular work is district work off of Common Core standards, Connection Science standards, C3 standards that are adopted by the state that we have to do or mandate it. We prioritize what we want to focus on. The teachers are doing that work in like, but they're pretty much standards as written. Instructional practices and decisions are teacher roles, that that's where they have choice in the matter. So if, for instance, there is no standard that says March through American history with the lens of white colonialism, yeah, teachers do that, okay. right? That's a that's an instructional decision that teachers have done. That's not curriculum. Okay, that's the case study they've chosen to follow to get at. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. But also so that that we can go into a debate about this, but I don't think we want to spend the time on it. I would say that you want to really think about instructional practices more than saying curriculum is a catch-all, because then you're going to get people saying our curriculum is fine because they're standards, and, right? So we want to focus more on what are the choices we have within there, would be my take. Go ahead, Zach, one last thought, because yeah. I want to focus on this first. Um, I think when, at least from students, like when the word curriculum was used, they're referring to like the material, like the content within it, would that still fall under Yes, the that's a teacher choice. Yeah. yeah, nobody's forcing any kind of material on a teacher. Unless it's like in like the class, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's oh, the only okay. time that is. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um anything else that's on this list? Any other themes? Okay, so let's move on. It's like budgetary process was kind of that was down there. A little bit of our timeline and goals. 
a little bit. Yeah. We erased it. It was up there. It was erased. <laughs> to make a priority. All right. So we have student outcomes here too. I'm just oh, uh, bullying harassment. You have. Yeah. You have safety and wellness here. You had it down there too, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we do. Uh, we definitely had it as a big topic of conversation with uh, student staff safety came up a lot and it was sort of like how do we what we struggled with was how does the, what is the board's role in ensuring student and staff staff safety and how can we make it a board goal when a lot of that work happens yeah. um, internally Which is a great question that and that's also attached to like in the DEI. Yeah, they're, they're out, in my mind, they intersect. Yeah. Okay. I would add a, a point under it to pull in mental health. Certainly related, I would say, to bullying and harassment, but just maybe pull it out as yes. its own thing. What did you say, Mother? Yes. And so in with discipline, a big theme for us was restorative practices. So right, that's a pro that's a process or a way to get to discipline ish. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then three, do we have a three? I think the board budget roles and responsibilities and timelines, right? Is that or is that a different grain size? Well certainly community input into budgetary process yeah. is a board responsibility and goal. Okay. Did anybody prioritize that? We did. We, we, did. we have it. Yeah. We have it too. Yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't specifically relate it to the budget on our in our group, but just community input. And sort of output. <laughs> so it's like accountability. Meaning like how are we publicizing the progress that's being made towards whatever is are we intentionally publicizing the progress that's being made to address issues that are brought forward by the community. I should make communication process, but it's, I don't want to change your words. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, did the other two groups touch on net zero at all? It would have been. I would conclude that kind of, well, no. I would include it kind of in safety. And it could go in safety and wellness. It could go into a budgetary process. And community. Okay. Yeah. We ended up feeling like it sort of landed around, like, if, if the board has clear vision, then we can create lenses through that vision. And one of those lenses can be, could be climate stuff and net zero stuff. Um, so I've been personally sort of eager to hear from the vision committee and hoping that those can provide the lenses that we can use, which one of which could include net zero. I don't know if the other groups put something about the actual board process as a goal, or is that a strategy? So like clarifying board vision goals timeline yeah. there. I see it in the middle groups number two, Amanda. Yeah. Because we also had some uh -huh. So this is where I'm seeing this could go. Okay, so this is where I talk off my toes. So make sure anybody jumps in. This is what I, I would recommend or suggest happening next since it's noon and our lunch is probably on its way right now. Is that um, everybody write down these three themes and here's your homework. Wordsmith them a little bit into goal language. Okay, so um, it would be, and if we could go into smart goal, Kristen asked about smart goals earlier, um, smart goal language, that would be helpful because it, it may not be measurable, but can you say that acronym, can you say the acronym out? Smart, smart goals is uh, specific, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, relevant, thank you. <laughs> timely, and like a timely, yeah. 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 We just say it so much, we take it for granted, right? <laughs> That's interesting. I know a SMART goal acronym that 
stands for other things. Really? Yeah. There you go. They're not that, it's not that different. But not the same. Look at What's the Okay. Yeah. What's uh, the attainable. Name? Attainable. Okay. So um, what I'd like, what I would recommend, and this is totally up for discussion, Please excuse the interruption. Clay McIver, please come to the main office. There's a MacGyver. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Take these down, wordsmith them, send them to me. By, what's it going Wednesday, 6 30. Please send them to me by <laughs> noon on Wednesday. Okay? What I will do is I'll put them all in one spot, right? One document for everybody. And um, I'll try to get those out to you prior to the board meeting, although you may not see them. If you can get the sooner you get them to be better, because then I'll make a, a doc. Um, at the board meeting, we'll look and the goal will be in the first part of when we have time, we have a lot of time pulled out for this in the board meeting, will be a discussion around how, how which one do we like? Which phrase do we really like? Which ones do we really want to think it's good for? Um, and that's spending a whole lot of time wordsmithing, but like, which one really reaches those? It's measurable, it's attainable, we can do it in a couple of years. And put, then we can spend some time playing out the process, perhaps in committees, perhaps as a full board. Like right now we have it as committee work, but it may make more sense to talk about the process of what you'd like to see as a full board. Um, and because this is where I think as a superintendent, right? I want to know what you need from us at the administration side and what like when I'm making that year long calendar, how does this all flow across a year? Um, what trainings could be added in because we have to set that up um, for what we need. So that's where my brain goes. Um, but it, it's helpful to have the actual goal and priorities, which we've never had started this school year <laughs> for a board. Um, does that sound OK for everybody for where we are right now? Yeah. Would anybody like to make some friendly amendments in there? So let me just make sure I understand. You're saying, well, our homework is to use these themes and write our version of SMART goals that fall within these themes. At the board meeting on Wednesday, we will have a whole big list of yeah. Of and if they sound, if two sound goals. similar, like you and Jim write pretty similar goals, then I'll just with those. Okay. You know, like nobody should be offended if their exact wording isn't in there, but we'll, I'll try to synthesize it as much as possible. And then at the board meeting, we will whittle those draft goals down to our top three. Right. And then coming out of the board meeting, committees will have work to do to create a timeline of what it would take to hit those goals. Right. And if you get them to me earlier, then you can have time to look at them before. <laughs> right. If yeah. I get the vast majority beforehand, then I'll make a PDF. We'll put it up on the website okay. so that it's public, and you all will have it to review prior to Wednesday. But knowing life gets in the way, it can be hard, right? I feel like if we if we can, we need to do some homework in order to move the process faster. I agree. Maybe when you said that, from yeah, is it for the process or for the process? We have to read the because you can add or subtract from oh, these okay. in your work, right? Okay. When I you mean, do your homework. So yeah. these are themes. Yeah. And then a SMART goal would be like more like, here's a specific thing that we can accomplish. The board will, yeah. And you're saying within two years should be the time frame or within this year? Totally up to you all as board members. Okay. So it's just like that could also be defined within the goal. Like you could give a timeline within the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they don't have to all necessarily go on the same timeline. I just want to help. And this is where it gets like the goal versus the objective versus like, mm -hmm. like how we're going to get there. And we want to look at the goals so that we can then, as either board or committees, look at those, how we're going to get there, whether it's in five years or two. Yeah. Yeah, because that was sort of the struggle in our conversation. There was a lot of themes and a lot of sort of like bigger hopes and dreams. And then it was like, how do we turn this into something that we can like do in the next year? Right. And how do we word it in a way? So, yeah. Which is the tricky part, right? Exactly. It's harder. Yeah, I, I'll give you an example. I was listening in on a conversation around that zero and Jim finding in of like the board's role is policy. 
right? So we could, if we wanted to prioritize that, make a policy around net zero, right? And then you can see how that would work across multiple years. <laughs> you know, that, that, that goal is not going to change in one year necessarily. But then it becomes our job to report out to the board the steps we're taking multiple times throughout the year. Yeah. Make sense? And it might be that really just for the one year, the board actually says we're going to take a year to write and pass the policy. Right. And then maybe we say we assign that to the facilities committee, and the facilities committee is like, actually, it's going to take us two years. So we have to read, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So when we're, mm -hmm. when we, um, when we go back to do this homework, uh, I just want to, I, like, I think that doing an example together, I don't know if we have time to do that right now, but like well, doing, we're waiting for lunch, so. doing one example might be helpful for, to like understand what we're looking for, for Wednesday mm -hmm. that, and so we're talking about whittling it down to three or four smart goals. I'd say three, 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 Passing a net goal policy, a net zero policy, would be a goal. Is that what we're saying? It, as an example? As an, as an example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Then is it is that the wording of it, or do you want any more information attached to that? So make that as, a, as it. Let, let's play with this one, right? So a goal of the board, and this may it could be a standing goal, is that when large decisions, which large is very arbitrary and subjective, I understand that. So when large decisions have to be made, AKA budget, or for example, budget, right? Uh, the board will have design a process for community input and output of, in order to make budgetary decisions, right? That could also be, you know, big, large goal could be, um, or large decision could be around net zero. It could be around, um, I heard you talking about firearm policy, you know, like, so big, big decision could be something that's bigger than just budgetary process or different budgetary process. But that could be a standing board goal that whenever there's a large decision that needs to be made, that there's community input and output, then the board says, how are we gonna do that? Through committee work, through um, assigning roles, through, reaching, like just can you reach out? And we might even say that's the standing goal and then for this year, like by the end, by the end of the 2022-2023 school year, we will have that process written out for ourselves so that we can achieve that standing goal year after year after year. And that that's how we time bound it, is that we give ourselves that deadline of like, we have to actually get this process kind of codified so that it can be used over and over again. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's definitely that would be helpful. My idea. I think I, I agree with all that. I think it's kind of helpful and it's kind of my frame to think about what we can actually do in one year or two years. Yeah, I mean, we can think about the work we do and the, the processes we put in place. You know, can we write a policy? Can we put in place, you know, as Mia suggested, the formalized written process to like we get a big decision, okay, we consult our handbook which we don't have yet, and this is the process that we go through. Do X, Y, and Z, um, unless it's like an emergency decision that we have time. So, like thinking about some things that we can actually do as a board, I think would be helpful. And if we look at this one right here, um, I can think of in my four years, one time we have presented to the board on any kind of discipline data. Remember Pam Arnold and Matt Roy did it one time. That was a disaster. And it was an absolute disaster. And it was to show it was to show evidence of in need of a behavior teacher at MSMS for a budget, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we we had one one instance of that. We've never shown data around the number of bullying and harassment investigations we do, or you know outcomes or anything like that. Like that's never been something um, we've shared about. We've had one presentation around. Um, SEL, I keep looking at Jim because he's been here the longest. SEL from Mary Bechtel, right? Yep. Next year, we're piloting a thing called Talkspace, which is a virtual mental health therapy or mental health therapy process for every staff member, their children, and every student in MRPS, right? Which is a considerable cost to the district, but we're piloting it for a year. I would think the board would want some like data on that. Like, yeah. how's it going? <laughs> Who's using it? You know, like how many times are you using it so that you can make a decision because we're using ESSER money for it. 
you know, how are we going to use it in the past and next year if we are, you know, if we do or do you want to put it into our local funding? So those are kind of the things that we mean into this. Like, but if we if you were to make a goal around bullying, bullying and harassment, it would be um, I'm not sure what it would sound like. I can just picture my role in it, right? Bringing that data to the table uh, or to the board meeting so that you have something to talk <laughs> off of other than opinion and story and that kind of thing of what's actually happening. And, and it could be, you know, at least for the year, getting more data so we can inform policy. Um, Merrick, do you have something you want to say? Um, no, I, it was kind of answered. It was just like when we're drafting these goals, like it's best to keep it broad. Like when Libby like was giving us the example of, I don't know, like we'll create a process. We're not saying anything more specific. Well, but the first so the first word in the acronym is specific. Exactly. So I think I think we should right. write down the SMART acronym up here, and I think okay. people should have that as a note and maybe go through it. Um, because it's like, I'm, I'm very concerned about the measurable thing and when we're going to do that. When are, so when we write these goals, I think we also need to be alongside putting these goals out to the public as our goals for the year. I think we need to have, I don't know when that work will happen, but we need to, we need to have it a, a drop down that explains how we're going to measure, you know, what is the timeline, all of the SMART acronyms. And what, how we'll know we're making progress. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to just put the goal out there. I want to put all those things out there. Mm -hmm. I think the, like, I see these are overall goals. And I think what, in order, the a SMART goal is not going to get us to any of the, like, there are multiple things within those big goals. I think what the SMART goal is, like, how we're going to get there this year. Yeah. And like being able to say, okay, in the DEI, let's say recruitment climate, like all of these things, now I'm gonna use the SMART goal setting for this year as the board, how can we advance that work? And specifically, we're gonna just make this up right now. Uh, we're going to recruit in a you know variety of places, like I'm just making this up. Yeah. And I was like, um, I'm going to try to get this year, uh, I'm going to grow my own. I'm going to this year recruit five prior educators again, making this up. Um, and because those are really big, that's not going to give us smart, but what we can do, because this is, those themes are important for all of us. What we can do is each of us create some smart goals to get us to that big one yes. that will be specific for this year. So we could say, Amanda is going to do the smart one for bullying harassment. Here are some of like the steps that I see this year, for example, and then do that. I think that will better serve us than try to create the smart goals for what we have those things that we have, because so those are just big ones. So I don't think, I mean. That sounds like a, a friendly amendment to the process where instead of having three SMART goals, we're gonna have three themes with uh, with uh, with maybe three SMART goals for each theme. Mm -hmm. is, is that what it, I'm hearing you it, saying? It's like, this is when, the, when, when I think of process, this is when I think goals, objectives, like how to, and like creating that like, the strategies of how to get to that big picture. If we're gonna, if we're using this SWAT, we're definitely doing one year or two as deciding that work. That DEI theme, we're not gonna finish in two years. That's a, like a long-term process of how we're gonna work together to advance that. And that is not realistic <clears throat> in one year. Yeah, so we're not gonna be able to recruit Anybody. But are you proposing that three SMART goals is too few? Is that what you're proposing? I'm proposing that we look at each of these themes and then create the beginning strategies of how we're going to get there. And that all of us creating a SMART goal or two per theme. 
and then looking at those. I can see there being value in articulating almost like a, a vision statement around each theme. You know, like MRPS school board, you know, um, will prioritize DEI, blah, blah, blah. And then there's like, yeah, three, two or three SMART goals beneath there. But there's almost like a very simple vision statement for each theme, and then there's three SMART goals underneath it. That would be Or two. I hear you, Jen. I see your face. You're like, that's just, it's too much. It's too big. It's yeah. hard, not. I mean, I think a lot of our uh, those goals look to me like they could easily be created in the future mm -hmm. Keep talking. Yeah. Keep talking. It's fine. I mean, I, I we didn't even talk. Thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, with that more specific goals for like actual board work for like right. years. Like, Thank like you. What's, what steps can you achieve between now and I mean, things like and this will circulate and we'll probably hear, <clears throat> you know, six to ten goals that need to be seen, and then we're going to have to do the work of whittling down what is the mark of this yeah. year, what is the priority, what is doable and attainable in this timeline of one to two years. Exactly. And I'm going to be the Jill wet one here. Because <laughs> the reality is that. As a board, we are responsible to the voters for the budget, and we have some. This waiting study is really going to ding up for your Roxbury as far as our funding. So we need to also be able to understand what our role is and is not in infecting outcomes here, and also be able to articulate what we're doing as a district to our community so that we continue to support our budget. I just want. I just. That is a big part of our role, which is to develop the budget, advocate for the budget, get things funded. And this waiting study is changing for the worse the weights that we get our education spending based on. So it's going to impact our tax rate. So I, I, I agree with and I'm glad that we've done all this. And I also think we need to be realistic about you know, we meet twice a month, we have public comment, things come and go, and we need to be able to um, defend our budget and explain the positive impact that what we're spending is providing to our community so that they'll continue to support it. But I'm also hungry, so maybe. Well, I would also and I want to balance we that with our yeah, yeah. And I want to balance that with the responsibility we have to our students and our families to tackle some of these other things. Right. So it's like, yeah, that is our job to kind of balance safety with the budget. Right. And can I don't hold on, time out. Can we move tables so that people are looking at each other while mm -hmm. we're eating? Oh. Like just merge. Circle out of here. For example, to achieve these things. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is is not to not do these, but that we need to be prepared to explain this to the community so that they can see the value in what we're doing. So they'll continue to support this work. Because if the only headline I've seen about our district lately is 11% tax rate increase because of the waiting study, not the 50 great things that are probably happening to address a million other things, that's the stuff that people see headlines about. And I just want us to be really on our feet so that we can explain why the waiting study is what it is and that the decisions that we're making, how they're impacting students, how we focused on student and staff support as we're coming out the other side of this pandemic and I don't know we're very fortunate we have a very supportive community not all schools have that level of support and I just want to that's all I just wanted to mm -hmm. somebody should be prepared <laughs> to respond to that stuff yeah and I think building off that like yeah those things come up and, and they yeah the board only controls the agenda so much. Mm -hmm. Wait, Jim, what do you mean? Did you just say the board only controls the agenda so much? Yeah, I mean, if, if, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you, you get hit with a 
Please get hit with it. You get hit with COVID. Um, I, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, know, you get hit with an 11% tax increase that radically changes the discussion of the community, radically changes. You get hit uh -huh. with, as you know, the board did like 10, 11 years ago, a budget defeat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so obviously you want a good plan and goal to guide us, but um, you know, there are there are things that come up that mm -hmm. are very significant that you know that you'd be prepared for. Amanda, Amanda and I were talking. One thing that came up is that we felt like we need both increased accountability, but also increased flexibility, mm -hmm. yeah. which sort of sound opposite at first, but really I think they you know they aren't. Mm -hmm. um, And I think this is why it's important to show the big picture. People, when they're they're only presenting like, here's how much your taxes increase, but like if you can show the benefits of like, or like the issues that we have and how we're getting there, and you know, how as a community we are taking, you know, communities from diverse places and we're increasing. Like I think it, this is. This is why it's not either or. It's like and and we need to show the whole picture so that our community is aware and can make a, a decision that is and that we're thinking about all the communities, including those who are low income communities. The tax that it's going to be and that they should go pay. That's right. <laughs> I kind of have a question for the group about the vision committee and their results. How polished a of a result would you like to see come from, like would you like the vision committee to take their, to take a chance at writing a draft vision and a draft mission and identifying values and then sharing either all the data in its raw and massive form or somehow distilled in one way or another or levels of distillation or something? Distillation. Wasn't that sort of, wasn't that in the proposal, in Bill's proposal, like what the end products will be? <clears throat> did anyone read that? I did. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah, it's the, I think so, but I haven't looked at it. I think it was, um, if I remember, my memory of it is that it was sort of more broader strokes um, I don't think it said like a, a craft, you know, craft a vision statement for the district. I don't no, think that was the board said that's our job. That is our yes. job. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Boards. personally, I wouldn't, if, if they, that committee has time, which it sounds like time has been a struggle, it wouldn't be a bad idea to see a draft or maybe some bullet points that you want to make sure to have included in the vision statement, but it's not part of the <coughs> job of that committee, I don't think. Based on what's happened with that committee, I would say that the themes would be our biggest hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once the themes are given to the board sometime and that, that's not up there, right? That might be something that we want to hold on something else. Or it could be on the community input output, right? You've gotten community input. Yeah. And so now the goal would be uh, using the themes from the visioning committee's work to draft a vision, draft a new vision statement for the district. Yeah, I think it'd be very difficult for the visioning committee to actually craft the statement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be hard for us, and it'd be a lot harder for the visioning committee. Yeah. I think that I think I like the themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be very helpful. Yeah. And my thought, as far as the feedback. It was just that we'd, we'd pick out the really interesting ones, good or bad, and then just make the rest available. But I mean, there's so much feedback, and it's like right, all different formats. You know, you have some questionnaires, you have some opening questions, you have contradictory yeah. themes. Yeah. <laughs> Big surprise, public education. <laughs> 
to me. Hey, I have to go in about 20 minutes and I was hoping that part of lunch at least would just be like sitting around and chatting. <laughs> Could we, are we okay adjourning the meeting and just like <clears throat> hanging out together for a little while? Or we feel like we sure. have more business to attend to? <laughs> Uh, the thing is, like, once you formally join the meeting, we, we like seriously cannot talk. We can't drift it to, it. which I'm yeah. totally fine with. But it's it's hard. It'll it would yeah oh, no. it, it'll become a, a violation of open meeting law if we start kind of like oh what about this oh yeah and then I guess I just want to make sure like I you know in our small group it was like there was a couple priorities that we each had that were sort of like lost in the translation of, of sort of narrowing it down or making it more broad to fit other things. And I think it sort of relates to what Amanda is saying is that um, it's that delicate balance of having the goal, or in this case, the theme. The themes are the broad things and then the goals are the, are the more specific things. Um, but it's that delicate balance of like having a goal that's big enough that can last a year and not be like, oh, we checked that off, we're done, right? Um, and that it's like capturing all of these things that we're all individually are bringing to the table as concerns. Yeah. So like one of the things that I would love input before we just chat about our weekends or whatever, is if we could workshop a little bit around the curriculum concerns that have been brought to us from students. And that that was a big priority of, of Merrick and Zach when we've met outside of the meetings. Um, you know, it would fit under DEI as a theme, it would fit under community input, output <coughs> as a theme, it also would fit under safety, you know what I mean? It fits in all of these things, so do I, if I'm going to be trying to write a SMART goal around that, or, and I think I heard Amanda sort of proposing and maybe Kristen echoing that maybe it is a theme with a few SMART goals instead of just three SMART goals that we like land on after this process is finished and I still am struggling with like I don't want too many because I want to make sure that we accomplish or try to accomplish I think I shared with these I don't know if that's a type a thing but sort of like <laughs> I want to know that I can do this or like I want to like see the light at the end of the tunnel and not have it be too broad of course we'll always be sort of working towards it or just too lofty sort of like it's always going to be there as you know, part of the vision work, right? It's always gonna, DEI will always be part of our vision, I think. But then it's sort of like, this year, what do we want to accomplish? So I think a question to add on to that is, what's the board's role in that work? So right. There is legitimate places for the board's role, right. but the board's not gonna change instructional practices, right? The board could um, make policy, you know, make some implications in policy around instructional practices or, um, or ensure budgetary money for professional learning right. goes towards instructional yeah. practices, right? But yeah. um, choosing instructional practices of teachers is not the board's role, right? And so that's what Jim and I talked about yeah. in our, I was like, I've been a teacher. I would not want the school board coming into my classroom <laughs> and being like, so why aren't you teaching about this? But how do you feel if we were to pass, let's say, the uh, set of social justice standards that kind of have some implications about resources and you know is that something that the board could do um, yes i mean i think that would be helpful guidance because i mean it's the standards like if, if libby if you're talking about curriculum as just being the standards standards are like skill based right now that's how so they're written some of them are not all of them, yeah true. most of the global citizenship standards are where it's like, here's this like specific, they're not like theme, like we expect you to teach, you know, ancient Egypt this no. year. No, no. <laughs> where no. they used to be that, that's right. what they used to be. They right. used to be sort of like, <clears throat> so my, I was global citizenship teacher or history teacher, or however you remember it. <laughs> um, but it's like, it used to be sort of like set up like, okay, in these grades, we want you to touch on these like historic themes. And then in these grades, we want you to move towards, and that's why everyone learned about ancient Egypt in middle school, right? And then you move through um, and you get to like European history in high school. So it's no longer written that way. It's more like skill-based. Like, are you able to analyze a variety of perspectives throughout history or themes throughout history that 
relate back to this, the topic that the teacher is teaching. But then hypothetically, the teacher could choose any, right. it's the case study. Yeah. It's like, <clears throat> world is your oyster. Right. Like exactly. what historical theme do I want to teach about? Like it could be anything. Some you teachers know? are just using the appendix of the C3, for example, which is uh, like for the social studies teachers that could give more diversity than that. So in terms of like smart goal, it's like, yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I would like to workshop that a little bit or if, I mean. I think it's really important right, because I don't know if it's the board's role to, uh, to write curriculum for the school district. Well, no, I'm seeing it exactly the way you are. Policy. Yeah. Policy monitoring. Yep. Action plan. Mm -hmm. yep. So that we can like. What do you mean by here? action plan? What would go on an action plan? So maybe it's like measurable so it would be measurable success towards meeting the policy okay so or but isn't it maybe who comes up with the action plan yeah, yeah. oh okay so policy it would be like okay. but we've we've tabled policy monitoring for a while yes. now yep. so we have not heard back from Libby on things and if we're prioritizing the curriculum or DEI policy so right now there's a paragraph in the DEI policy about curriculum okay. and that's kind of the only place where it lives for us. So under our purview as the board, like that's what I see. It's either like we write a new policy that relates to curriculum or we adopt a procedure or ask Libby to adopt a procedure that's like specific set of standards or I forget what you said. Social justice standards. Social justice standards as <clears throat> part of the DEI. You know, something like that. But it's like, so how, yeah. I just don't want that to get lost. Like that's a big priority of mine now. And I just don't want it to get lost in, and watered down into like having too big of these. Yeah, I mean, so like, I, what, what I can think, we do and, and how do they advance the, the And I think that's goal. where the collaboration with Levy goes is to ask what, what you see is our role versus not. And how and, and like that conversation Please excuse me. Okay, well this is my please come to the main office. Like this is you know, this is something that's important to the board. Some of us has come from community input. We now want to do an output and so what is kind of like our role, your role, and how do we come to the middle to walk the path of getting to the end goal, which is we're gonna have a district that really follows through DEI and that it'll be and, and what are the resources that we're gonna need, the teachers are gonna need to be able to uh, implement a curriculum that impacts both students. I'm having a moment of feeling a little funny about articulating goals like in public forum when we haven't really been able to see the community feedback from the visioning process. It feels like <clears throat> the cart is coming before the horse a little bit. Um, you know, if these this if this is going to be the work that is, or if these are going to be the goals that define our work for the next year or two, without having everything that we're getting out of the visioning process, I could just see how that would be perceived as like undermining, and and <clears throat> the um, public would just feel like, well, that was futile. <laughs> They're just Good moving point. ahead, and they haven't even yet heard. Right. You know, and I guess they probably admit the public doesn't really know where we are at, likely in in this process of like distillation. But I personally then have kind of like a moral ethical <clears throat> hang up of like defining our work plan without having heard from the community yet. Good so, point. and I, I guess, you know, I don't, <clears throat> I, we can only push that process so far and it is massive. And um, I think I haven't looked at Nathan's email that came in notably at 12, 10 a.m. And he is and clearly working pieces. so hard. Okay, yeah, and I haven't seen those. So, <clears throat> You know, I'm I'm like, do we have to do this by Wednesday? I mean, this is really big. And do we look at, yeah, <laughs> do we look at, you know, doing yes. kind of some deeper personal homework, like over the month of July when we're not meeting and so. we're on beaches and maybe other <laughs> relaxed places? Are. 
what's up? Or while we are. Yeah, right. You know, and because are we having a, a retreat in August or no? I think we're going to have some sort of extended meeting in August. Yeah. Process with the visioning committee gives us. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that we have been all trying to work on is like these board processes. So if anything, this is not a futile exercise to kind of just leave it and wait for the vision committee to come back. And one thing that we, you know, we could be working on is like, okay, like how are we gonna do this board process? Like what are the things that, you know, we could, I mean, some of it informally has been happening. Like the equity committee has been trying to develop already the board packet that has some of these things, right? Like. Um, the policy committee is looking at the overall picture of like, you know, and then how do we develop those processes? That's still work that regardless of what vision or mm -hmm. goals we have, mm -hmm. we still have a lot of work to do together to mm -hmm. come up with, you know, all of us said it, we need to improve the way that we work together to advance our goals. So we could have beautiful goals, but if we don't have a process in place, we're just going to keep not doing our work. Mm -hmm. Holistic, I like that word. I keep using it. Today. So you could use the board meeting on Wednesday, only because I think you want, you want, or at least I want you to <laughs> have an idea of what Wednesday's going to look like. Because Jim's going to have to announce it during the board meeting. Um, you, you could, I think Kristen's point is very well taken. Um, and uh, the other thing is the, the staff climate as well. So right. right. So um, it could be that you use the time on Wednesday in your main, main committee, because some of you are on multiple committees, right? You could use that time on Wednesday in your main committee to talk about where are you now? What's the next step? You know, let's get the next direct step going and where do you hope to be based on a very good conversation that you had today, right? It may not be the exact conversation for our goals and things, but it could we could put the goal setting aside until you were able to hear from Nathan's work in the climate survey. I think I, I agree with that completely. I think the optics would be horrible of announcing goals before you've gotten feedback. But for what it's worth, I don't think there's gonna be any surprises mm -hmm. in the in the feedback. I think it's it's the same themes and similar issues. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think there's some surprises. Yeah around not as much emphasis on some themes as we think there will be. Do you know what I mean? No. I mean, you're going to be a <laughs> um, Libby, when you say get together with our committee and say where are we now where are some, and what are some next steps, can you say, can you give me a little more context? Where are we at now yeah. in terms of these three themes? Or where are we now in terms of No, work? I think just in terms of the work. So I think of the policy committee who works quite a lot. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's not very easy said very yeah. articulately, but um, the policy committee can say, "All right, this is what we know we have to do." You know, I've written to them about a couple policies. Like, where is that in the lineup of conversation? Which is something that you, I don't know, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what have we done? What's the next thing we need to look at? Just some time for that kind of planning. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about the majors who meet quite a bit. Like facilities have been meeting quite a bit lately um, with buildings. The equity committee meets quite a bit and the policy committee meets quite a bit. Superintendent evaluation seems to be in a good spot-ish right now. Um, and negotiations is not something you usually talk about in public meeting anyway. And that's starting again in the fall. So there's plenty of time to, there's nothing that we need to talk about around negotiations. Did I miss anything? Oh, when finance. Mm -hmm. And this finance. Um, but that's kind of around quarterly reports and things like that. So, so what you're saying is the, the committees that have been that have some ongoing work. What we would do is kind of get ourselves organized for yeah. the year ahead. Yeah. But Somewhere I, in the year ahead. But I sit in multiple committees, so I can have like two hands, and so do we. But I have so some of these goals, for example, are bullying, harassment, discipline. Um, some of the work around outcomes and. Um, how do you call that? I can't see that far. The student climate curriculum and instructional practices. What was the last one? Decisions? Oh, community input output. 
No, outcomes, like oh, the outcomes. student outcomes. Like, yeah. um, so for example, just the, the literacy focus around that disparity <clears throat> and like how like some of the emails we received from families and just like, I, I guess that goes to the input and outcome and how, how do we tackle some of that? So I, I don't I just don't want to because that process is not going to happen until August and then we're going to spend another two months kind of looking at the data looking at so like right now it just feels like there's some other movement we can do around some other work like we should put all the eggs in the goals and like what are the other things we can do other than the committee work which in the two committees that I'm in I feel like we already have some things that we're working on, that are planning, that are moving, that are kind of going ahead. I don't know. What, sorry, I'm just, it's just, yeah. it's, it's, I'm, I'm feeling like the, that is just like, okay, we're gonna just go back to what we're doing and forget that until August, September. And I'm like, oh. I think there's some other options that you'd have on the table. You another option would be that you know the budgetary process is coming. <laughs> there, you know you have to get community input around that budgetary process. You know that in the past it's usually been too late um, to inform the process. Now I know the visionary process could have some impact on the budget process, um, but <clears throat> what might that process look like? You could go there. Um, other places like you have heard uh, things around literacy, special education. Could you potentially think about the yearly calendar that um, Jim and I make and think like we want data presentations this day, this date, you know, like spread them out mm -hmm. so that we can get those on the calendar? Um, or you could ask me questions as to when would be <laughs> days that would make yeah. sense to get literacy data um, in front of the board. So you could go a different way of like, yeah, getting at these kind of outcomes and community input with things that you know are out there. That's another way you could look at it. Just like, what are the what are the things we want to have in front of us to inform decisions that we know are coming towards us so that we can add that to the yearly calendar? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think using Wednesday to focus on some data presentations and process we want for the year ahead, because I think, I, I think, Community input on kind of the broader goals and visions is really important. I'm not sure community input on process is, I don't think we're going to get much. And I think that's something kind of we have to decide. So we could use Wednesday to kind of think about that from the perspective like, you know, what do we want to see from the administration? What kind of data do we want? Kind of with these in mind, and we'll bend these a little further. But um, how, I think what I hear you saying would be in gym is how might we organize ourselves for the year in order to ensure that these themes we the board is keeping our minds in these themes and regardless of what goals we end up setting we yeah. would have touch points throughout the year within which we, we would be able to get information that would help us move toward those goals yeah. so and then your homework would be what questions might you have right thinking about literacy or special education it might be what kind of trainings do you need yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Can I add one more homework? What if we also think about the budget process uh, as to what are the things we feel we should get for, like to inform the community or like to get that input and output just based on the budget so then we can plan a timeline. Like, you already gave us a timeline of the points at which we make decisions and yeah, like the process that, yeah. uh -huh. and so like we want to plan ahead <clears throat> like we're going to decide that what do we need between those decisions what do we dream of having in place between those decision making points that we want to make sure we have so like I, I feel like there's a role for the finance committee in this because the finance committee has these quarterly reports and we kind of need forgive me for not knowing what my role is in that committee completely, but there's kind of a, okay, you're giving us a picture of where everything's at. Is there a place where the finance committee can, can ask for highlights of 
what the intentions were from a previous budget and how it actually turned out, or I don't know if, if there's a way that the finance committee can sort of identify information that we hope can be presented to the whole board to help the board better make budget decisions or better communicate with the community based on previous decisions, or I'm not sure. Um, I have to go to that. When is the visioning committee going to be recorded? I thought there was like a soon, like a sort of pre, like a, a report out, end of school year report out, and then that we had extended the timeline through the summer to sort of finish fine tune the work. Are we, is that the emails that came last night? Is our sort of report out? We're also meeting report? tonight. Yeah, we, can, we can find out. I'm not sure either way. But you're not coming to the board that there's no like visioning presentation to the board with like a. I was just looking. The preliminary findings. There's nothing that's scheduled okay. as of right now. That doesn't mean there isn't. It just means there's nothing scheduled. Because I was picturing, and these are, goes back to assumptions. I was sort of picturing the visioning committee, a representative or two coming from the committee to report out on like, here's where we're at so far. Here are the things that we've identified so far. And that after that, um, and since this, since tomorrow or Wednesday is our last board meeting before the school year is over, I thought that it would happen and that there would be like a report back to us and that then the extra time that was being asked for was to sort of like fine tune like, the themes and um, proposals for the vision. I believe well, you're assumption. I'm myself out of the room. I have okay. to go back to the follow-up. Your <clears throat> assumption is accurate as to what the process was supposed to be. Okay. That is not how the process is go. shaping up to be. Okay. Um, and so I think we may find out more tonight. I'm looking at my fellow committee members. <laughs> Um, Can we just put, a, like we do committee, like committee report outs. Can we have the visioning committee report out on Wednesday? I don't see why not. It's, it's a free for all right now, and we can do whatever we want to okay. during that time. I think that would be a good. Plus we do have some of the data. Well, we have the data, actually, with all the data. So we just got the data, yeah. 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 12 times. Well, yeah, we have all the data now, so. We'll it would be great to hear that. I mean, I, yeah. We also have the climate. Yeah, so I almost feel like it's, I think this is what Amanda is touching on. I don't know, because our brains work differently. Yes. We have discovered. <laughs> um, that I think what you're saying is like, you don't want to like lose momentum and progress. Like we want to, we do want to get goals written down. Um, and I feel like if we have a preliminary, preliminary findings from both the climate survey and the visioning committee, even if it's not like polished, that that could help inform our goals. Our breath thinks they're No, I'm kidding. Um, I think, no, I, I want to respect the vision and committee. Uh, I think, like, I don't want to lose momentum and because there are things that we could do. Yeah. What, I, what, I, <clears throat> what I am feeling is, like, I, like, all this work was beautiful today, and I think it, it gave us a lot of information, and I think when we have a vision committee, we'll add to that. Um, but... I think there are specific things we can do, like looking at the budget, that's something that we need to do. We, I don't want to lose momentum on that. Let's wait for that before we can move forward. There are things that we can move forward and do. Yeah. Even in our break in July, or like thinking of the budget, like making sure that we have, let's start setting up that process of how we want to work together to advance our I know, work. I just worry that after today, where there's like this organized time set aside to do this, that when we say, let's do this, let's do that, like whose shoulders does that fall on and when will it happen? Because aren't we taking a break in July? Mm -hmm. So we're not meeting again until August <coughs> after tomorrow night? Or do we have another meeting? In no, after tomorrow night we're... I won't be here. Or sorry. That's so after tomorrow night. I don't know. So I just, it, that concerns me is like this, pre that, like who and how in July. Well, I mean, accountability came up in a few different discussions we were going around. It didn't make it to our top three, but definitely was a theme. I mean, one idea I had in jest, which actually might work out, is like, 
What if the student reps are the ones that are, their job is the ones coming in? They come to the meetings, they're the people that are affected by it. You guys can say, hey, we met last week, you had all these great ideas, what the hell did you guys do last week? Maybe not in kinder words. <laughs> so, how would it see well, that? Well, it'd almost be like, like you would either review or review the minutes and just keep us accountable for what we said the week before for what we said we could do. Um, and you know, it's not it's not necessarily punitive. It's you're asking, hey, let's, this this was important to us. We brought it up last week. Just to address it. It's been a month. What, what's happened? Maybe nothing's happened, and there's good reasons for it. Maybe there's been some. Um, I don't know but, if that's their role. Right. I think that's more my role. Right. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> but it might be fun for the people. Yeah. I mean, someone <laughs> someone in that position to do that. Um, and Jim's role. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, I think just to be manageable and so we don't have a forum meeting you know, on Wednesday, I think if we can focus on some process things, we want to see to move this conversation forward and also set up some process things for yeah. when we come back in August. Okay. Um, Establish a work plan for July before the August meetings. I don't know, so I don't know it's a work plan. I just, I just think the, the process things that we want to have happen when we come back. Um, yeah, I think some committee work is going to happen in July. Uh, I mean, I've just been on the board on Monday than July. Nothing happens. Much people. Yeah. And I think people need that break. And I think they need to recharge. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, and I think kind of use the think about using the visioning process, which we're going to get hopefully in more depth in August, and you know the upcoming. Budget process is a way to start to pull us. Yeah. Okay. The stuff that we have coming. And, and, and as far as that visioning, I'm, I'm envisioning, I'm seeing like we got a ton of data and um, I'm imagining going through it. I'm imagining Sage is going through it. We're both looking for themes. We're trying to come up with themes that anybody would feel are, are, you know, represent the views that we've heard. How do we? Communicate with each other as we're doing. Do we? You like, can present information. You just can't have go back and forth. You, know, you two like can. That. You, you two. Can, you yeah. two can have I mean, one-on-one -on -one conversations. <clears throat> yeah. Because because that, that maybe. Yeah. I mean, you can and share stuff. Nathan, yeah. Like, we can just have emails go back and forth, agree on it, then share it to the yeah. broader group, kind of, yeah. sort of. Okay. And then do like the PCC. It does feel so like would, it does feel like a ton of data, and I'm happy to go through a lot, but I don't want to. Want to do stuff that somebody else has already done, or that's you know, I mean, that's going to happen. But um. so just to be clear, we're not drafting goals anymore. It doesn't sound like it. We're just yeah. What are we? What I is think. Our homework? Thank you, Mary. Yes. <laughs> is it just like you know, yeah, I don't know. what are we doing in preparation for Wednesday? Well, I think I, I how about this? Why don't we do two things? Why don't we because it's fresh in our brains draft our SMART goals and give them to Libby. The idea, we won't just discuss them on Wednesday, but then she'll have them for August, because in August we'll be like, what are we talking about? So, so, so draft them and send them to Libby just so she has them in one place with them fresh in our minds and then, you know, that document will exist. But I'm, for the conversation on Wednesday, we think about some process goals that we have for particularly August, September, and then kind of go to the year around data and you know, community input, what we want the budget process to look like, some specific things we want to have happen procedurally and, and information-wise that will inform our ability to really hone in on goals and also some of the things we just know we're going to want to do. I mean, we're going to want a thorough budget process with, with good input. Um, and I think we can make a safe assumption that as we vet these more, we're going to want more information on DEI. We're going to want more information on safety and wellness. And you know, giving Libby an idea of the type of data that we're seeking so she can start to think about you know, how to put that together. So go back to the calendar. Yeah. If I make a blank calendar beforehand and get it out to people and yeah. just so you have it in front of you, then we can craft that. And I heard Libby say, you know, questions you want answered. That's really helpful. Trainings yeah. you might yeah. want, and then presentations, right? Yeah. So like data you might want to yeah. see. 
I like that. Training data. What kind of training? What kind of data? And what questions kind of you have. Questions you have. And that can inform your process of like setting the agenda and the calendar for the year. And that can always change once we hear back from like more thoroughly from the vision community. And we're like, whoa, hold the phone. Yeah. And there's Looks some like that I'll throw out that, like training, I'm thinking of trainings in particular, like this board has never dealt with expulsion in any way, but based on what we saw this year, it might legitimately be something the board will have to tackle next year. And so I think bringing Pietro and Heather in, you know, for a board training yeah. of what is your role? So, we're, so we don't have to figure it out when we're in the moment. Right. <laughs> it might be something that's helpful. Um, so there might be some trainings too that I would recommend we do. Yep. With myself included, because I'm not also on that. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'll send an email out to everybody. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.